Nikolai Malko was a frequent conductor of the Danish National Symphony Orchestra. Every third year since 1965, the Malko competition for young conductors has been held in Copenhagen, Denmark. Velkommen til Malko konkurrencen. Malko konkurrence. Malko Nikolai Malko. Så er Malko konkurrencen 2018. Hosted by the Danish National Symphony Orchestra, one of the world's oldest broadcast orchestras. With our chief conductor, Maestro Fabio Luisi, as chairman of the jury. This year's competition comes live to you from our home at DR Concerthuse. We invite you to enjoy five days of competition, excitement and passion for music. Welcome to the Malco Competition 2021. Your live streaming host and commentator is Andrew Miller. Yes, and welcome to day three of the Malco competition for young conductors here, live from the DR Concert Hall in Copenhagen, and it's all change today. There were 24, and now there are just 12. Last night, the jury whittled down our contestants, uh, halved the number of contestants here in Copenhagen, and we can see on screen there those who will be joining us for today. And the musical menu has also changed significantly. Gone is the delicate Mozart, Haydn and Weber, and in are the big guns, Carl Nielsen, Gustav Mahler, Johannes Brahms. We'll be hearing Nielsen's masterpiece, the Fifth Symphony. We'll be hearing Brahms's deep, tragic Third Symphony. And we'll be hearing Mahler's uh, curious and um, joyful Symphony Number no. 4. All this music uh, designed to push the conductors uh, way beyond what uh, they, they were, was expected of them over the last two days. So we can see there the uh, mix of people and nationalities we have remaining with us here in Copenhagen. Chloé Dufresne from France uh, and... Uh, Chloe Hook, the two Chloe's uh, who were so popular in this in the first round, uh, will remain with us. As will Valentin Egel from Germany, the first contestant this morning. Our local Copenhagener, the Norwegian Niels Erik Musevog. Uh, we remain uh, in the company of Joel Sandelson from the United Kingdom. Teresa Riviero Bum from Austria remains with us. As does Holly Hyun Che from the USA and South Korea and many more. Well, we can see a magnificent view there of the Danish National Symphony Orchestra filling this extended stage at the DR Concert Hall in Copenhagen. And there is our first contestant, Valentin Egel from Germany, 26 years old, studied orchestral conducting at the Franz Liszt University of Music, a uh, member of the uh, German uh, Conductors Forum. And let's uh, remind ourselves what Valentin gave us in the first round. He was very diplomatic. He handled the vibrato question very well in Mozart and Haydn. So impressive for his age, still so young in, uh, not only in conducting terms actually, just in general terms in his twenties. The youngest of eight children, but the only one to become a musician and someone who already has uh, their conducting career up and running. He works at the Croatian National Theatre as a Kapellmeister. And uh, we saw from his postcard the, the charisma, the sort of uh, joie de vivre, or camaraderie, I should say, that he shares with his musicians in that orchestra in Croatia. Frequently uh, taking hikes and picnics with them in the woods. So here he is. From Germany, the first contestant of this second round in the Malco competition, Valentin Egel. Good morning. It's great to see you and to see everybody now. Um, my two pieces are Brahms and Nielsen, and I start, please, with um, Brahms' second movement.
And we, first of all, please go back just a little bit. Uh, we can do two things. First of all, this reprisa, which is 85. This auftakt, when we have It's a hidden reprisa, and it has to be magic. So this um, espressivo, ma dolce, for the first woodwinds there. Yeah, let's just try that more. For the strings in the whole thing from A on, E or A, what do you say in Danish? E. e. <laughs> yeah, um, that we get very, very soft, like water. Through the, through the string orchestra. But we go a little bit before that, please, from uh, 71, from 71, so the sound now is there, yeah? That's what we want. When it becomes forte in this movement, let's always breathe down here and have a round, dark sound. No, like, brightness, actually. Only in this fortissimo at E. At E, yeah? Okay. Directly, please. One, um, 71. Beautiful. Let's, let's afford one more minute with the Brahms and then go to Nielsen. Um, uh, this color in C, C, in C, yeah, that came also. You, you, you realized what I want, I think, on the way. Let's have this from the very beginning there, yeah? Let's use the diminuendo to go as far down as we can and add C directly. You live at the C, right? So uh, these mornings before the sun is there, this gray color of the sea when the sunlight isn't here. Yeah, so sul tastissimo, almost no vibrato, and breathing out in the strings. We start, please, last minute with Brahms, uh, out, uh, upbeat to B, to B, yeah? out. Yes, that's the color. I'm so sorry, but we have to go to Nielsen, otherwise we don't have time for it. Nielsen, first movement, please. I don't know when I started. Could you tell me when I have one minute left? Oh no, you are not allowed, okay.
Thank you. Beautiful. Uh, do I have one minute or two? You don't know. Uh, I don't know if it was four or five past. Um, doesn't matter. Um, just let's. I can't rehearse the whole thing. Just when we have crescendo, please don't get faster. Yeah, together with the winds, they, they stay in tempo, that's great. And let's do two, one more time, two, just as an example. Uh, and let's be more careful with the dynamic he writes. If we don't do crescendo when he don't, doesn't write it, I think it's much more tensionful. And then we have crescendo, and then we have to do it a little bit more than just now. Yeah, it's too vorsichtig. Dwa, uh, two. I'm sorry, gentlemen at the trumpets, that I couldn't hear you today, but that's it. Thank you very much. Mange tak. Yeah, mange tak uh, til, uh, to Valentin Egel, and um, so it's a real high wire walk that first movement of uh, Brahms of uh, Nielsen's Fifth Symphony exposed, and he was trying to get the tension there. Uh, very interesting, but it was so at home, at home obviously as well in Brahms. The German um, really felt in his element in that excerpt from Brahms's Third Symphony. A sense of uh, tragedy that runs through all four movements of that symphony, even the, the movements that appear on the surface to be more light and, uh, and relaxed. Well, Valentin can now uh, talk to Selina downstairs. Yeah, he just have to put his water bottle down and then he's here with me, Valentin Egel, first contestant of today. How was it to be back on stage? Oh, so wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I guess you were happy there. And then starting off with two very different pieces yeah. as from what you had yesterday. How was it to shift to such a, well, let's just call it a heavy repertoire? Yeah, definitely. It's a completely different sound world than the Haydn yesterday. But also the orchestra is, of course, not much bigger than yesterday, so... Um, yeah, that's actually great. And it, it was very interesting to see how we very quickly, I think, got to the, to the completely different sound world, actually. Mm. It started a bit light and then it became more heavy. That's what I thought. <laughs> but you seem to have your difficulties leaving the Brahms. Suddenly you said, oh, we have to get to the Nielsen. Yes. But you forgot the timing or... No, just I just it? didn't know if I was starting at four past or five past. And I just have this digital clock there, which shows the time. <laughs> so I wasn't sure. That's why I asked. But okay. Um, yeah. It's, I mean, the two pieces are equally great. And uh, yes, go on, please. Well, we have to go yes. on to the next contestant. Okay, thank, thank you, you very much. for joining thank us. <laughs> yeah, I think he did have some difficulty leaving the Brahms. Uh, he's a real uh, Brahms lover, uh, Valentin. Well, uh, the next contestant uh, from uh, neighboring Austria. Katharina Vinsor, uh, uh, she comes to us uh, having won prizes at conducting competitions already. And um, again, a strong performance in the first round, uh, seeming so um, uh, uh, I would say so well structured in her handling of the orchestra, very clinical in uh, her rehearsal structure. And here she is now uh, from Austria, the 26-year-old Katharina Winsor. Good morning. It's great to be back. We start with Brahms, the third movement, please.
shape that theme a little bit before we go on. Um, the first very important thing for anyone who plays the theme is it's something that's really inside of us. And, and if we sing it out that much from the first note, I think it's, it gets just a little bit too much. Jelly, beautiful. In, in five, bar five, we can, we can start a little softer and just keep going. It's a very long phrase that has to develop. First and second violins in your accompaniment. I think it should be something even. So rather than separate gestures that each of you do. We play that once more. And just be careful in the cellos in 13 and in 15. Accompany the first violins. You were a little ahead right now. Thank you. Very, very good. Um, at A, it's a little bit of a guilty pleasure of mine. Three bars after A. Can you do a portamento? Maybe one, one, two. That would probably work. Um, and and really, so they start this. They play the melody two bars first uh, before, and 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 you are like you expand that. You're on top of that. It's even more. And double basses in 28. You make them just dance a little. There is something light, always weight, but release. Um, from A. We have to give them the chance that flute, oboe, horn really blend. I don't want any of you to force. And bassoon, uh, clarinet, you have to keep going in the 16th notes. It's just a danger that if you enjoy it too much, that it gets a little slow after B. Um, we go from 32, it's the softest moment.
Can the diminuendos be stronger? It's like very elegant, like a ballerina that kind of just goes on a toe. <laughs> right from, let's go from C, so the, the two bars before. I think we will have to go on very soon. Before that, we go to bar 70 once more. Those are again, enjoy Mayora every time. Very intense, total change of character. Second violin is also a lot of vibrato. Uh, 70 with upbeat, one. should go on. We go to Nielsen, to the adagio in the first movement, that's pretty much in the middle. Two, six, eight. Two, six, eight. Do we get the upbeat from the oboe? Two, six, eight. Thank you. that we have to give more importance to each eighth note. Right now, it kind of escapes us. The eighth notes, notes escape us. Um, yeah, let's just, let's just do it once more.
beginning was super beautiful. We have a change of character in when we have the new Art Tempo 284, obviously. Before that, can I ask the violas to diminuendo stronger the, in the Relentando bar, especially second violas. It was just a little too present right now. And all the lower voices, you played already so much, and then we add violins and flute. Give them the chance to slowly develop, so really back off when they enter. We go from 281. It's a bit different, everyone plays it a little bit differently right now. When we have the pai, this is bar 291, we really have to hear it. Can I just have once uh, 290, the first violins, that we hear each other? Yes, and a very beautiful sound rather than a hard beginning. Thank you, we go from 288 to D. Let's give us one more chance for this uh, transition. 315. Second violence, you stay present, please, while you back off a little. They have still a melody going on. Shelly, just in 318, F sharp, A flat. That's special. That we can bring out a little. 315.
you very much. Katarina Winsor there from Austria, and uh, by starting um, some way into that uh, first movement of Nielsen's Fifth Symphony, she really got into the heart of it. Um, what many consider Carl Nielsen's symphonic masterpiece, of course, this orchestra very much at home with that music. And before it, the third movement of Brahms' is Symphony Number no. 3. And uh, in just a moment, Katharina will be caught backstage by Selina Hustrup for a word about her performance, and uh, we can hear that right now. Yeah, Katharina is here with me now, uh, having had her water, shoulders down. Look, you look happy. So how was it to be back on stage? Well, it was a very funny experience. It was very funny because the Nielsen, I think basically none of us has conducted that before and they know it so well. So they give us so much energy in that piece, which is amazing. T tell us a bit more about that. It's your first time with Nielsen. So well, how was it to conduct the orchestra in that music? It, 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 it felt really good. Overall, they just carried the sound in the Brahms and in the Nielsen, which made it very comfortable for me. And then, of course, everyone has their ideas. I have mine, and that's still part of the game, that I bring mine, and I. It, it, it feels a bit trickier when you go to an orchestra where you know that they know that piece that well, obviously. Thank you, Katharina Winzer. Thank we'll you. We'll see what the jury says. Yes, uh, we will see what the jury says. And uh, next up, Niels Erik Mosselvok, who is a Norwegian resident here in uh, Copenhagen and uh, once again uh, uh, an experienced student uh, young conductor um, worked with the Oslo Philharmonic the Bergen Philharmonic the Norwegian Norwegian radio orchestra and um, we saw from his first round his real work on rhythm uh, especially in the Weber overture he wanted to work on the foundations of the piece the low strings and the brass elements that are so important to uh, Weber's musical language. And of course, that extends to Brahms, the challenge of Brahms, keeping the music uh, in some sense fluid uh, while working on those bass foundations and not letting it uh, get bogged down. So here he is, the 28-year-old from Norway, Niels Erik Mosevo. Good morning, everybody. We start with the Mahler. First movement.
Wonderful, thank you. Let's go back to the very beginning, please. Can we get even more of this childlike, naive, innocent quality so uh, eighth note staccato can be really very short, especially in woodwinds, for instance, bar, bar seven, clans and bassoons. Mahler said about this first entry in the first violins, it should be like starting a Viennese waltz. So we need to build up this tension and then release it with a really elegant subito pianissimo. Let's try this from the very beginning, please. even more uh, grazioso. Uh, the, the flute and the, the cello should be non ritardando, yes, and only clarinet and, and first violins are ritardando. Let's do it once more. When we have this as in three bars before one, the forte piano is for some people on the first beat and some people on the second beat. The first beat forte piano, can we go really to piano? Uh, and the second beat forte piano with a bit more punch, so it really comes clear out. Uh, when we have accents, in this ta -di -da, ta -di -da, a little bit more light and with humor, and we're starting a little bit loud, let's go softer in bar seven of the low strings. Start directly by seven, please. Thank you. Let's go to Brahms, please. Second movement. Can these crescendos um, be more juicy, be more even, a little bit more, and, and a little bit more richer in the winds, please? Can I also ask for, in the second clarinet and bassoons, even more uh, legato and phrasing, even though it's the secondary uh, part? Let's go from the beginning, please. slightly more warmer as well, and with vibrato on every note in the strings. Uh, the last note in the fourth bar, I mean the first note in the fourth bar, is still keeps singing on this note. The phrase doesn't end until, until the rest. Wonderful. The beginning.
Thank you. Uh, could we go back to that, please, to letter B? Can we be even more singing in the strings here? Uh, a little bit more crescendo in the second bar so it really warms up. But starting, I think, a little bit softer from B. Letter B with upbeat in the oboes. quarter note um, line in the basses and, and can it be even more searching for something, going through the line, searching for the clock. Thank you very much. There we go, 16 minutes from Niels Erik Mussenbog from Norway, the third of today's round two contestants here at the Malco competition for young conductors. Once again, such sophisticated gestural language he has. Uh, very, very clear for the musicians here to follow. And in a second, Selina Hustorp downstairs will capture Niels Eric for a word about his performance. Yes, uh, here they are. Nils Erik Mosovic is uh, ready with me now. Um, thank you, Nils Erik, for joining us. Uh, thank you. First contestant doing Mahler today, and yes. you chose to start with the Mahler. Why did you do that? Um, well, maybe it's my instinct to start with the piece with uh, the most, um, uh, the, the biggest orchestra. But also, I think in this case, um, it made sense because um, it's a more complicated piece than the Brahms. So maybe for my own nerves as well, it was nice to get this one out of the way. And then afterwards with the Brahms, I could more, more relax. Okay, so what were the challenges for you doing the Mahler? I mean, the challenges in Mahler is that it's, um, it's very rubato. Or it, the style of it can be very rubato. And also the structure of the music is, is still very crisp and clear. So it's very obvious when it doesn't really match up. Um, in Brahms, for instance, the, the structure can also be quite... Uh, the playing can also be quite rubato, but often the, the structure is a little bit more forgiving in terms of uh, if it completely lines up or not. But Mahler is very exacting in that way, almost like um, a heightened symphony or a Beethoven symphony. So very transparent and... Exactly. So, so did you get what you wanted from the orchestra? Yes, I thought we, uh, we managed to, to, uh, to achieve a few things in the short time. Uh, I mean, it was how many minutes? Nine or ten minutes on the Mahler symphony. Um, but yes, it was a lot of fun because it's, uh, it's a really great piece. And, um, yeah. and then, uh, then going from, from Mahler to the Brahms symphony, you chose to dive into the second move and this pastoral soft movement. Yes. W was it a different sound world you wanted to create? Or? Yes, I think for the Mahler there should be more uh, a crisp and, and a clear uh, sound quality. But for the Brahms, um, I believe it should be even more singing. Of course, they both have some similarities because they're both... Um, they have something childlike or the wonder of nature, this kind of atmosphere, uh, but still approaching it from two very different uh, points of view. Well, interesting. Thank you, Nils Erik Moserok. Uh, yes, good to hear from uh, Niels Erik downstairs, of course, a Copenhagen resident, despite being um, from Norway. Well, the Danish National Symphony Orchestra will take a well earned break now, uh, as will our contestants, which gives us the opportunity to look back uh, and to look more deeply into the art of conducting and the art of interpretation, which of course is what this competition is all about. And we are joined by someone who knows an awful lot about that, Klaus Tunshoff, who is co-principal clarinet with the Danish National Symphony Orchestra. Klaus, you're also an experienced jazz musician, an experienced conductor. You know an awful lot about uh, orchestral leadership uh, uh, from both sides of the podium should we say. But first of all, I wanted to ask you, professional orchestras are notoriously unforgiving when they're working with a new conductor. Presumably, in Malco week, as an orchestra, you're a little bit more accommodating, should we say? Yeah, it's more or less uh, the same. Uh, uh, it's just, it's far more intense 
because we have to present a result within 15 minutes with a brand new conductor. The conductor has not any experience with the orchestra before and we don't know the, the, the conductor. So uh, we need to see the body language, but we also have to obey what they say. So if they actually ask for more brass, then they will maybe get it in a more effective way than uh, if it's uh, a period of a whole week. Yeah, so normally you, by lunchtime of the first day on Monday morning or by the afternoon of the first day, you're getting to know the conductor, whereas here, yeah. maybe it's after five minutes. Yeah, we have to be very, very quick. And uh, at the moment, from the first round yesterday, there were fewer strings than normally due to corona. So we had more brass players and wind players in general at stage. So when the conductor told the brass players, as we saw uh, with some of the last uh, conductors yesterday, to, to play more trumpet, then they will actually get it immediately because they ask for it and it's a competition. Yeah. But I'm sure... Uh, the conductor from yesterday would maybe reduce it again uh, the day after, if it yeah. was a normal week. Uh -huh. And uh, we're here to talk about interpretation, and it's particularly interesting to be dealing today with Carl Nielsen, yes. a, com a, a composer with whom you're intimately familiar in this orchestra. And, you know, it, it's fascinating when you are a professional musician working with the great masterpieces year in, year out. I wonder how open you are to new interpretations of pieces. Now, it's a little different in Brahms, isn't it, to in Nielsen, because none of these conductors really know Nielsen. They're standing in front of a Nielsen orchestra telling them how to play it. Yeah. So how open are you to new ideas about your own kind of pet composer? I think it doesn't make sense to have a conductor's competition if you are not open into new ideas. But I also think that there's a very short amount of time where you see the conductor and you want to find out whether you want to um, follow the ideas or not. Uh, and I'm sure if you go down uh, to the orchestra now having their break and you ask them, they will have a clear opinion about whether they like it or not. And, and they, don't have to be, they don't have to agree. That's the funny part about it. Yeah. There can be some parts, there can be something in the sound, the tempo, the expression. Uh, it's interesting just to see new things. Mm -hmm. And I think the orchestra is open-minded to play in another way than normal. It just needs to be a very clear and a good way. Yeah. I mean, there's so much in that, isn't there? Whether or not you allow yourselves to go along with a conductor's uh, interpretation, there's whether you trust them, there's whether they're a good musician, there's whether they can sell their ideas to you, even before we've come to the question of whether or not you agree with those ideas. So, I mean, there must be occasions of, in which you disagree with the conductor's interpretive, interpretative ideas, but yet you're kind of drawn along by them, whether through musicianship, charisma, likability, whatever. Yes, I, I will say that I'm not the best one to play something which is totally against my own thoughts. Uh, I'm not the best one in doing that. I have colleagues who are better than that, but I would never play in a certain way for rehearsals and then doing something completely different in the concert. I would not. But I will, during the week, try to convince the conductor to make it in another way. Some, sometimes, in our case, it's about breathing. They don't want to breathe. They want to make a very long line. And we can do it if they sustain the tempo. But if they go slower, we will have problems. And we know that maybe before them. And then we have uh, a problem during the week. We have to fulfill their dreams, but we also have to be able to, to not die. Yeah. And, uh, and of course, we, we've seen over the last uh, two days and this morning, it's about body language as well as speaking to the orchestra, isn't it? I mean, Niels Eric, there, very secure sort of um, uh, gestural language, a secure kind of physical technique, not much talking. Some other conductors, they prefer to draw you into a narrative. We saw it with De Freischitz uh, yesterday and the day before, the story of the opera. I mean, you could... Musicians like you will have your preferences, yes. but is it about a combination of those communicative methods or uh, are you willing to go with someone who excels in uh, one or the other? I think that you should show everything possible and if you really cannot show it, then you can briefly tell. But the orchestra is not interested in having somebody, somebody with long speeches. They want to play and they want to become, uh, to know the conductor on uh, their body language. And you can also, as a good conductor, show many more things with your body than with talking. 
I remember some years ago at a medical competition, we had Lorin Marcel as the president of the jury, and he had this microphone voice of God. He could take and, and say, please proceed to the next piece. And there was a uh, participant in the competition who just did talk and talk and talk and talk. And then at the end, he, did, he took his microphone voice of God, and then he said, not very nice, he said, stop talking, start conducting. That was what we heard in the hall. Yeah. And I think that you uh, might pack your suitcase after, <laughs> after this comment from the jury because yeah. you have not fulfilled what I you I mean, it's for. nerves as well, isn't it? Of course. Yeah, yeah, on the first morning, you can see they're nervous. Yes. You can see sometimes flattery. Yes. They use flattery. Some of them have used uh, the Danish language. I remember three years ago, Wilson, the young conductor from Hong Kong, speaking beautiful Danish that he'd obviously spent four or five hours learning yes, one yes, sentence yes. the night before. And, and on, on this uh, theme, I must say, it doesn't impress the orchestra. <laughs> it, it is not a good way of presenting yourself that you come in as a modern leader. You have to take the leadership to everybody. You have to show the clear way. And you start by speaking a very bad Danish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Flattery. Of, course it's, of course it's bad because they are not Danish. Of course. They should not try to. Flattery does sometimes uh, does not get you everywhere. Well, thank you, Klaus. Stay with us. Uh, but right now we're going to hear a little more from one of our first round contestants. Uh, it is, um, in her own words, uh, uh, talking about interpretation, the conductor Bar Anvi Palantin. When I'm studying the score, when I'm preparing myself for, to meet an orchestra... Hello, everyone. I'm definitely, I'm imagining a sound. Really very happy to be here and to make some music with you. I really believe that as conductors, there has to be a great sense of flexibility in us when we meet an orchestra. Yet, we should never lose our interpretation. The the process of rehearsing is not I bring them to me and it's not they bring me to them. It's we are coming to each other. Even if my interpretation will forever be the same, it will never sound the same because every orchestra and every day, every concert, every hall, every, it's always different. Well, here I am, the score of the Don Giovanni. So there is this andante part, there is the, the slower part, and then there is the molto allegro, two parts, very clear, magical Mozart. Keeping it charming and never repeating itself. Um, Another surprise, even more charming, you know, you think, you think, okay, I know what he's going to do. We heard it, it cannot be charming twice. Doch. And then comes the flute and the fagot. Wow. So those are actually the moments that I'm also looking for in the, when, I'm, when I'm rehearsing. So the, the, the magic happens in the second time. It's extremely so important for me that it got even two rounds. The process of learning definitely includes this, 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 there. There, like where am I, with whom am I, in every moment. One of the common, most common fears of conductors. I will come on stage and I won't know what to say. So I also have this fear. At the end, there is one thing that is important. The idea has to go through. They have to understand me. And, uh, we will be all focused uh, to the same idea. Try to create the same idea. This is the most important thing. Sometimes, a technical comment will be more helpful. So about the tempo of the first four bars, I think we have nothing to say. It was clear I wanted a bit faster. We'll do it right now. No big deal. And I think generally all of those pianos could be much, 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 much softer. When it comes to sound or a color of sound, a picture could help more. First violins. Um, perhaps we could try senza vibrato and it's and I'm sorry for this image, but it's like, it's like a knife on the, on the super slow knife on the skin. It has to be so extremely painful. Go to the... I'm a tube when I'm conducting. I'm, a, I'm some kind of a connector between the music to the musicians, between the musicians to the audience, between, you know, also if you think about it physically where I'm standing, I'm really in between. If you look at the, maybe you could say I'm closing a circle with the musicians. So on the one hand, it's an extremely important position in this construction. 
And on the other hand, it is absolutely not about me, right? It is about everyone else, maybe. Thank you very much. Bar Anvi Palantin there. And even though she's out of this competition, sadly, she really made an impact on it with uh, her, her sort of sheer force of personality as well as her musicianship. Um, really interesting to hear, Klaus, uh, her thoughts there about interpretation. And you're not such, uh, 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 you're not really sold on the idea of storytelling and uh, picture painting that she described there. But, um, you know, this is part of the conductor's arsenal of skills, isn't it? Yes, in this particular case, I think it's strange that she says sorry for this picture and then she gives the picture. So she, she knows she should maybe not talk about uh, knives on the skin. Mm. Uh, but she does it anyway. Yeah. And I think it's a way of uh, talking to an orchestra which is maybe less experienced. Uh -huh. Yeah, and she made the point there about worrying um, that you suddenly will find yourself without something to say. And I think we've seen a few conductors in that, in that position so far this week. Now, she also talked about sound and colour. And uh, this is an orchestra, the Danish National Symphony Orchestra, with a long tradition, one of the oldest broadcasting orchestras in the world. And a certain sound and I wonder how you allow um, conductors to sort of pull at that sound or push at that sound or I mean one thinks of a good conductor as being someone who can work with your sound rather than persuade you to play in a different style sound yes but if the sound works at a certain place you don't have to change it and you don't have to go into it and, and we see a lot of very very good top conductors of the world that we are lucky to work with they are actually coming and conducting and if it works then they they back off and we have also seen it a couple of times in this competition that uh, some conductors uh, have uh, the possibility to go away uh, if it works and simply focus on other things we had a few conductors the first day where they actually stopped showing the pulse and they just invited people to play beautifully, and that sounds great. Yeah, and that's a modern that. leader, and I understand what she says because if a modern leader stands uh, to talk to the company, and he or she does not know what to say, what to tell, what to mean, then it's a problem for all the employees. Yeah, I mean they're listening as well, aren't they? Well, well, with those conductors you describe, standing back, letting the orchestra play, it's about them listening to what you can give them, yes. and, and and therefore yes. knowing what they can work with. And in this situation, it's a big mistake to listen to something you really like. It can be something surprisingly, uh, an accent somewhere or another phrase played in another very beautiful way. You like it as a conductor, you don't know what to say, and then you start to comment on it saying, could you please do like this and this and this? And then you actually present the I idea as if it were your own idea. And that you can only do a very few times because the musicians will say, oh, it's nice that you, that you have noticed that I did this but now you are presenting this as your own idea. And a modern CEO would never do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so interesting to have your, your thoughts, uh, Klaus. But right now, uh, let's go downstairs to Selina, who is with one of the orchestra's concert masters, Su Jin. Su Jin Hong, who has been concert master of this orchestra for 17 years, I just checked. So uh, she's really been sitting with these musicians for a long time and has been uh, striving hard the last two days. But you seem to be having fun, Su Jin. Thank I'm you. Having for a lot of fun. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of fun. Thank you for joining us. Now uh, you have been through a lot of different conductors, a lot of different interpreters. Mm -hmm. Have they shown a lot of, of, of different versions of the music? Yeah, they definitely. And uh, I mean, now in this uh, Merkel competition, during the Merkel competition, it's so um, interesting to see all the talents and what they can do and what they are available uh, um, to do. And it's... It's actually not surprising because they are very different. And as a violinist, I know that violinists can play Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto in many different ways. So it's very certain that they, they, that they are very different from each other. They uh, also interpretation and how to express. But it's um, very interesting for uh, me just to sit there and then observe, observe their like uh, face expressions and then their all this um, their move movement yeah all these different interpretations and now you say they have their face they have their hands their arms uh, they speak to you now if a, if a conductor should be really smart 
Mm -hmm. How how would they how would they communicate with the with I, you, these conductors? Should they just use their hands or or talk or what's the best? I think the best way for me uh, it's different from person to person, but for me it's very important that I can uh, that the, I have the conductor who can show everything actually with their hands. Um, I feel with um, our chief conductor Maestro Luisi, he always um, somehow I feel that he has like spider web around the orchestra and then you know immediately what tempo he wants and what character he wants just when he gives you the upbeat and it's amazing um, to be part of this and then you can really feel that everything comes together in, in musical sense and um, I think it would be great just to uh, communicate with their face expressions and of course accurateness in their direction but um, because it's such a short time uh, they have got like 16 minutes for Brahms, Mahler uh, or uh, Nielsen so I think it's it would be good to know what they want immediately so when they just uh, start. So not not so much talking and still still a lot of them talk yeah. quite a lot and a and, and lot of them Uses, you use images yeah, or yeah. metaphors. Yeah. How does it work for you if a conductor says, play a bit more juicy or... Um, I mean, it works for me. Uh, I think it's good that they don't only just talk about being together or just... Yeah, I, I like when they talk about pictures because it, then you have the same picture when you play and it helps. And um, um, But of course, when you talk, you really have to... Be smart because uh, you you can say things in different ways, so it communicates to you. And um, I I remember like two different kinds of conductors um, during my time in the orchestra. Our uh, Yuri Temyakhanov, he would just almost not use his hands, and he would just show, look at me, <laughs> look at my face, and then you know immediately what he wants. And um, uh, our uh, chief conductor before, um, uh, Rafael de, de Burgos, and then he would just close his eyes. So he doesn't show it so much here, but he really has like prolonged <laughs> like arms, which you feel that he's hugging the whole orchestra. So it's very extreme. So when... actually they can talk or they can show as long as it works. Thank yeah. you, Sujin. <laughs> Here we come. Sujin Hong, uh, oh, Sujin, was, I'm, I can't remember her surname, it was Sujin. Sujin Hong. Sujin Hong, uh, there, 17 years in the Constant Masters chair uh, in this orchestra. What, a, what an incredible uh, um, experience that must be. And she mentioned there, Klaus, Raphael Frubeck de Burgos, Fabio Luisi's predecessor as chief conductor. And you were telling me earlier a fascinating story about him and the idea that sometimes you are forced to play one conductor's interpretation under a different conductor's baton. Uh, it was in Granada in Spain, wasn't it? Yes, it was. We have had some concerts with uh, Maestro Frubeck de Burgos, uh, with Symphonie Fantastique by Berlioz. Several concerts and he was sick and sadly he passed away in June uh, 2014 and very few weeks later we had this tour which should have been with him in Granada. We had a big open air concert and uh, the conductor uh, uh, which also happened to be his, his uh, friend Jesus Lopez Cobas uh, accepted to take over the tour and actually conduct the whole tour in memory of his friend. And uh, he told us that he didn't want to interfere in his way of conducting, so he wanted us to simply play the way Freebeck had in, uh, talked with us about. So uh, he did his job, but he also was very, very passive yeah. on his own uh, and, wish. And that is a skill in itself, isn't it? A lot of these conductors yes. are working as assistants yeah. at orchestras and opera houses. Their job there is to conduct somebody else's interpretation of a piece, which, you know, it, it's kind of like flying two planes at, at once, isn't it? Yeah. And we had a very beautiful last concert. We played Vier Letzte Lieder by Strauss, which is also very touching and overwhelming. He made a speech. We ended up on this open-air concert with, uh, with Berlioz, and it ends up in a firework of sound. And I remember very clearly that the orchestra simply took off as an airplane collective and just played insane the last three minutes and he was just standing and it was incredible just to have a conductor standing almost doing nothing and and an orchestra went crazy 
And then at the end, and I can only tell this because it is, it is a conductor's competition, he, uh, there was a, a big shooting star over the audience and the orchestra in this open air scene in Granada at the end. And it, looked, it sounds like Disney, I know, but it was really true. Yeah. And um, sometimes a musician just has such natural authority or natural yeah. presence that uh, you can do that. Uh, we talk sometimes about two types of rehearsal uh, in, 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 in talking of interpretation. One where you, you, you fix as much as you can in the, in the shortest amount of time. You get all the details right, uh, what we might call a, a, a sort of transactional rehearsal. Uh, but then there's also the transformational rehearsal, isn't there? Where a conductor will arrive with such a strong vision of a piece that they almost make you forget everything. You almost don't need to work on little technical details because their vision is so strong, so different. I mean, do you recognize these two different approaches? Yes, and talking about uh, Su Jin Hong before, she mentioned uh, Maestro Yuri Temekanov. And when he comes making Ravel La Valse or something, it is so convincing that he could actually go directly into the concert with a good orchestra and then simply do it because it's so clear what he wants. But optimal would be uh, that a type of rehearsal would be part of both of the ways you talk about. And we will see with the modern piece tomorrow that we need to have another, a lot of technical things to be placed very accurate. And there, really, the conductors have to show this ability to analyze the pieces very quickly. And this piece, they have not had any chance to hear before because it's new written. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a big challenge coming tomorrow. But today in Brahms and in Nielsen, um, you're a wind player. A yes. woodwind player. Yes. Uh, you, you are used to playing solos in the orchestra. Yes. And I remember um, um, a, um, a piece of advice from Marin Alsop to some young conductors. It's very dangerous to look a soloist in the eye when yes. they're playing a solo. You have to give them space. You have to create the conditions in which they feel they can play at their own tempo and their own sort of phrasing. Yeah. Is that right? How do you feel when you're eyeballed by a conductor? Actually, I like to have eye contact. I like to be invited friendly to play like this. But if the conductor has uh, the idea that I might be playing too loud, then, then I, I, sometimes you get, um, they do like this. And, and, and that's uh, not good, of course. So uh, I like to have this visual contact. I like to be spoken to as when we talk. But uh, the way uh, they address you is very important. And uh, uh, I think also when I sit listening to this orchestra with all those great conductors of yesterday, uh, uh, sometimes there's a tendency, if they know this place might be too loud, they have, did, they have done it with some amateur orchestras where it's always too loud in the oboe, they can have this tendency to, to conduct like this. And, and this is a very, very dangerous way of approaching a musician because it will not be a free tone. Yeah. And maybe we should just talk finally about how conducting styles have changed. We don't have long left, but um, one thinks of the 1980s when uh, it was very much uh, the kind of dictator yes. on the podium. And these days, um, people talk a lot about Nordic leadership, quiet leadership. I mm. think of Thomas mm. Sundegor, conductor who really kind of uses, empowers his musicians through other means. Yeah. Do you recognize the change we've experienced in conducting yes. styles? Yes, and it's a fascinating thought to talk about Wood Herbert von Karajan or Arturo Toscanini, just to mention a few, uh, have a brilliant career if they were born today. Would you be able to drive an orchestra? Would you be a leader the way they were, just by demanding and by humiliating people? Of course, they did not do that all the time, but there are several examples of them to be driven by fear. That I think that would not go today. Yeah. It would not be possible to uh, maintain a leadership today. Yeah. Uh, again, this is something that is very much in um, management speak these days. You know, fear is not uh, a good way to lead an institution. Klaus, it's been a real pleasure to have you with us today. Co-principal clarinet of the Danish National Symphony Orchestra. You, you will be playing later in the week, I guess? With next week, yes, next week, not next this week, week. Not this week, so you're taking Malco off. Yes, uh, I'm commenting. Okay, this week, yes. and you'll be watching from home, I hope. Yes. As well. Excellent, well, enjoy. And uh, in the meantime, um, stay with us because very shortly we have the next three conductors in this round two of the Malco competition for young conductors live here from the DR Concert Hall in Copenhagen. Stay tuned. Nikolai Malko was a frequent conductor of the Danish National Symphony Orchestra. Every third year since 1965, the Malko competition for young conductors has been held in Copenhagen, Denmark. 
Velkommen til Malko-konkurrencen. Malko-konkurrence. Malko. Nikolaj Malko. Så er Malko-konkurrencen 2018. Hosted by the Danish National Symphony Orchestra, one of the world's oldest broadcast orchestras. With our chief conductor, Maestro Fabio Luisi, as chairman of the jury. This year's competition comes live to you from our home at DR Concerthuse. We invite you to enjoy five days of competition, excitement and passion for music. Welcome to the Malco Competition 2021. Your live streaming host and commentator is Andrew Miller. Yes, welcome back to the DR Concert Hall in Copenhagen. Three contestants down this morning and three to go, starting with Holly Hyun Chae from South Korea, but now uh, a American passport holder, 30 years of old, uh, 30 years of age, and uh, one of the contestants who was put through to this next round last night after the jury's decision. She conducted uh, dramatically in, uh, in the first round, by which I mean she really um, went for the drama of the overtures. She was conducting an emphasis on storytelling. And uh, I think it was uh, the Freischutz she conducted um, in that first round. So here we can see a little bit more information about Holly, born in South Korea, grew up in California. Currently an assistant at uh, the Tonhalle Orchestra in Zurich, Pavo Yerby's orchestra, of course, uh, and holds a master's degree in orchestral conducting from Zurich University. Well, it's been um, so interesting to see how the contestants have handled the shift in repertoire today. We are into new territory after Mozart and Haydn, very much new territory with Mahler. Carl Nielsen uh, and Johannes Brahms. Uh, Mahler in particular, music absolutely made for conducting. It wants to be shaped with hands. Mahler himself, a great conductor. And we will hear from, well, we can see on the screen there the, uh, the options that the, that the conductors had. Those three symphonies, candidates prepared all pieces and yesterday uh, the uh, excerpts were announced that they would have to conduct 16 minutes with the orchestra this this round a whole one minute more than in the previous round uh, but that minute can make all the difference as we've seen uh, poor valentin there from germany was so into his brahms and um felt a little bit cut short in the nielsen what would he have done with one minute more but that is the test here to manage the time and uh to make the time work for you in the most effective way. Well, here is Holly. Her arms laden with scores. Just making her way through the uh, backstage area of this uh, very uh, modern, unusual building here in Copenhagen. Uh, the uh, the DR Concert Hall, part of a larger complex known as uh, DR City, home of the Danish Broadcasting Corporation. And the Concert Hall, designed by Jean Nouvel, very distinctive in its architectural style, a mixture of brutalist concrete and sensual wood. But it's also very sociable. It means that the moment you step off stage, you're in wide open spaces with your orchestral colleagues. And uh, that architectural sort of phenomenon is, is one of the it lies behind the atmosphere of Malco. You're never more than a few steps from from your colleagues and from the orchestra. There is a very congenial atmosphere backstage, partly because everyone eats, hangs around, chats in that beautiful space just off the stage where there's uh, today sunlight streaming in. So here she is the third of the round two contestants from America, but born in South Korea. It's Holly Hyun Che. Hello. Hi. We start with Mahler from Ziffer 2. Yeah. Uh, number two, big number two. Yeah. 
Nielsen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. First movement, yes. Rehearsal number two, minus three bars. Yeah, so three before rehearsal two. That's good. Okay, okay, okay. Nielsen? Ah, sorry. My apologies. My apologies. Sorry about that. Yeah. 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 Things happen when you're nervous. Okay. Suspend the symbol. Thank you. In these last bars, uh, for the seconds and violas, we need to somehow feel that this never stops, this di -do -di -do -di -do, and somehow it goes straight to the second clarinet. If you can, maybe with the left hand, add one more tira without the actual bow, so that somehow we can connect it to him. Um, <clears throat> when we are at two for the strings, uh, it's a little bit, let's try to think a little bit more a la breve. Uh, the picture that I have is you're in a, standing in a very cold morning after a burning, and there's ashes everywhere, and it's a very vast plain, and you're alone. Yeah, so it's very unemotional because you're just taking in this, this uh, emptiness. Yeah. Um, second violins, when we come in, one la da -di -da -di, this f fall we have before you go into the <laughs> same air. If you can just bring it out just a little bit so that it feels like you're walking into a pile of ash and just tiny bits, yeah? Let's try it again. For the celli, after the body, somehow we lose sometimes pulse to get back into the fourth beat. So use the upbeat to kind of keep them in the alla breve feeling. Let's go from number two once more. Two direct.
exactly, exactly. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Chelly, when we have the sforzando, this is measure 85. You know, when we started from after three, the first mezzo forte, uh, forzando, and it grows more and sooner and sooner and it gets more ugly, yeah? And that one, especially at 85, second beat can be really rough, yeah? The sound can be rough. Yeah. Um, can we skip over to 115, just for the violins? Measure 115, violins. Let's try this tema together. Can we put before each forzando a slight coma so there's more space for the roughness to come through? Um, the first, this fortissimo entrance, this might sound crazy, but if you can imagine you're doing ten bows. <laughs> so the sound sustains, the energy sustains, yeah? Let's try once more. I'll be more clear. <laughs> One, two. <laughs> from the second violins to have the lower octava. Great. Shall we add from number four? Let's go from number four with a celli uh, a beat. Okay, thank you so much for your energy. Fantastic solos, yes. The clarinet, I always imagine this is like the <laughs> possessive character. And then the flute, when you come in, you're just like the psycho. Ba, 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 ba. Insist, 
Yeah? <laughs> this obsession is really well written. Um, Uh, first violins, if it's possible, one, five, two, to make the molto crescendo, even as you go down, <laughs> insist also. Going back to uh, where we were. <sighs> yes, now it's Muller. <laughs> yes. First movement. Smaller first movements, yeah. this frisch. I tried to do a subito frisch tempo <laughs> with the upbeat in the new tempo. Um, and the two bars before, we will keep it steady with the ba, 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 ba. But of course, your eighth notes in the winds, it has a direction, but not a noticeable accelerando. Uh, in this tema with the clarinet, if you can imagine, this whole thing is about, you know, little child, heaven, wow, food, bakery, no. <laughs> In the first movement, it's the child on earth for me. And the bom, beep, bom, ba bom is kind of um, uh, having a game as a child when you pretend to be whatever you want. Here, he's like, I want to be a Viking today. Yeah, so this do, ti is a very, oh, kind of like a march character. So the, intoni um, the color of your clarinet, if you can make it sound like an E flat clarinet. Yeah. Let's try it once more, the transition going from upbeat to one. Big contrast. One with the upbeat.
thought so, yes. <laughs> Thank you very much, Pravi. Yeah. Holly Hyun Choi Choi there from uh, America and um, South Korea. And uh, she has such a distinctive uh, use of imagery when talking to the orchestra. All those pictures of uh, children playing and um, in the Nielsen before it, the intensity, the psychotic flute. Uh, very clear way of communicating and um, yeah, she certainly knows what she wants in terms of character from the orchestra. And uh, in a moment, hopefully she'll be ready to talk to Sina Hostrup. And there she is. Yeah, standing here with Holly Yon Cho, who just uh, came out doing the Mahler and uh, before that the Nilsson. Let's just go back to the very beginning. You come on stage, you raise your arms, and what happens then? <laughs> I, I accidentally called the wrong piece, and I was sure in my head that I called Nielsen, but I called Mahler, apparently. So <laughs> how did you notice? How soon did you notice? The downbeat. The chord already from the downbeat, yeah. Okay, so what do you have to do then to collect yourself again after such an <laughs> start? Hmm. I try to speak slower in front of the orchestra so that it gives me also my heart to come down and then for my brain to catch up to my body and to be mm. functioning normally again. Yeah. And then you moved on with the Nielsen. It seems yes. like a piece that speaks to you very shortly. Did yeah. you get what you want from the orchestra? I did. And it's amazing honor to be able to do with a Danish orchestra and a Danish composer. When do we as young conductors get this chance? So I'm very happy to have done just a little bit of the Nielsen Five. Yeah. Thank you, Holly Oncho. Sure. <laughs> yeah, and a reminder there, uh, Yo-Yo Ma said, uh, it's always good to get your mistakes out of the way early. It settles your mind for the rest of the performance. And I think that certainly was the case with Holly there. Well, next up, Mirian Kunkunashvili, who made a real impression in the first round of this competition, I think it's safe to say. Um, a conductor with extraordinary presence and uh, seemingly able to, to, to draw a sort of huge sound from the Danish National Symphony Orchestra. And uh, lack of sleep is no problem for him, apparently. He is a new father recently, uh, so has a lot on his plate, but has certainly um, not given the impression of being anything other than 100% engaged in the task in hand. There he is, waiting backstage, and it's tantalizing to think what he will bring to this music, given the strength he got from the more classical repertoire in the first round. Uh, as we were saying in uh, the first round, he's uh, uh, an entrepreneur in some ways, an impresario, founded an orchestra in Tbilisi in Georgia. The uh, Tbilisi Youth Orchestra has seized the initiative in getting, getting musicians together to play for him. So here he is. Let's see what he can do. 31-year-old Mirian Kunkanaishvili from Georgia. Hello, everyone. Such a joy to be here again. Let's start Mahler, third moment, please.
bit longer, bit longer staccato. Very beautiful. Thanks. Uh, in trans, let's start from um, 2017, entrance of second violins. Uh, let's start really transparent sound, pianissimo, but soon add some vibrato. Uh, yeah. 16, we have. I think it's 16, you're interested in 16, right? Yeah, 17, sorry. Even, even from nothing, very from very far. First should come here. Could we still, could we try it? With a just to link these two notes. Otherwise, it will. In the, this is even slower take. It, it's all always be beautiful, very beautiful in slow tempo. But we need to keep all the time. Otherwise, it will become boring. So, all the time, lean all the time. With, with okay, that was already. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, thank you. I. That was nice. At least I heard. Okay, uh, Nielsen, uh, seven uh, bars. Before 13. A tempo. A tempo, it should be. Let's 
still adagio? Not really. We have? So I will just make a balance. Everything is fine. Just only uh, think with the brass, uh, first the uh, brass trombone and tuba, it could be more, but still with this character, this chorale character all the time. So we keep this character like uh, this is the battle, yes, but we fight the brass, we fight in this battle, ignoring this evil idea. So we all the time keep like, like a monk in a monastery, like thinking to clear the mind and just ignoring everything ha here happens. And we, sorry to say this, but we should uh, be like ugly devils, like de uh, devils, like everything. But I will, I'm with you. Uh, I couldn't see you first. So that was nice. Uh, once, all, all the time, try to throw me out the temple. Just battle with me. So make this accents even more just broken rhythm that uh, try that I will be out of like <laughs> that conductor will, will throw conductor out of tempo. So <laughs> uh, could we start uh, directly uh, 341 and uh, in measure uh, 357, uh, 58, uh, first and second trombones, it could be more. The first time you start, it's really nice, but then, it's, then we could have more lower buses, uh, brasses. Uh, three, four, one. Do we have this? It's easier to start from. Three, four, one. So really. <laughs> It could be more palm, like he starts in answer. Okay. Sorry, I was just too concentrated to them, and I will, I didn't show you yeah, my mistake thing. Once again, sorry. It's a, 
this, this starts very good, but these two eight notes, it's a beat later. And da, da, di, da, di, da, 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 lead, and then it'll be okay. He didn't want to stop, but he has to. Time's Thank up. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, for many, that that uh, few Thank pages you. of music is the most yeah. remarkable ever yeah. to have flowed from the pen Thank of Carl Nielsen, who was born 156 years ago today on the island of Fuden in Denmark. It is Carl Nielsen's birthday today. Mirian Kunkanashvili from Georgia. Uh, what an extraordinary moment of music that is as the snare drum has to try and do everything possible to disrupt the musical flow. Played by uh, Gerd Sorensen there, the, uh, the orchestra's principal uh, percussion. Well, here uh, now we can hear from Mirian and Selina. <laughs> yes, if he, if he would listen to me, he didn't really listen to the gong. You, you, you overheard the gong when it really? was... <laughs> it, Maybe it was a battle, and in this battle, this gong was really natural, <laughs> and I really did, I didn't hear it. Oh, but we okay. heard it three times. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, man. Such as. Miriam Kukunashvili, you chose to start with the mala and to play with no interruption for eight minutes before commenting. Well, that was unusual. Why did you do that? Um, I chose this movement, both the pieces here. Yeah, I, I chose the parts, it's like adagio. So I really wanted to show this like difference with characters, the maximum tutti fortissimo to get from the orchestra and minimum like piano pianissimo. Uh, and uh, I was, you know, it was really my dream to conduct these mothers, the so, third movement. So, so I just tried just, they, the, the first if they did, didn't follow me, then they followed me if I showed. So it was really nice a connection between us and that's why I didn't stop it. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you very nice, much. Really. Thank you. Mirian there, and uh, from one of the most promising candidates in the first round to another, Dmitry Matvienko from Belarus, who had the orchestra playing at an extraordinarily high uh, level of intensity in the first round in the overture to Mozart's Cosi Fantuti. Another short baton, like uh, his Georgian colleague, even shorter baton in his case. Oh, he looks like he's got a longer one today. Um, very much trying to work on uh, articulation with the Danish National Symphony Orchestra in the first round. Extremely keen to get a period style from the orchestra in Mozart. And here he is uh, in round two. Let's start from the Mahler third part. Third movement, sorry. Th th third movement.
Thank you very much. Brahms, third movement. Thank you. Uh, sounds great. Thank you. From the very beginning, uh, two main uh, thing, uh, things about the team. Yeah. Um, not too much exaggerate. More breathe. And uh, thirty second note. Should be 30 second note, not uh, triol, yeah. Cantabile, but yeah. And um, of course, without the uh, exaggerate and without pressure, please, yeah. So everything goes from inside, yeah. And uh, one, two, three, four, f uh, bar five. This is melancholic moment, yeah? So uh, without crescendo to minor, of course. And uh, no. Yeah. And sorry. And bar eight, little bit uh, more deep. And a little bit more slower. 
I, I mean the speed of the ball, yeah. <laughs> Could we try once again? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. And please, a uh, little bit more faster, Diminon. Second, you continue this line. So not ta da di ta da di shi da 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 di shi da da di di. Okay, bar five, please, of the beat. This is uh, uh, important to play this tesura and a little bit more, um, um, how to say, uh, unwillingly, yeah? And please, a uh, little accent in the first note. Little accent. Uh, please, uh, five bars before B. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes, uh, that's your time up, uh, Dmitry Matvienko, I'm afraid. And um, that's uh, Brahms' third symphony, third movement, music of uh, real dialogue and uh, sense of spontaneity. And I think he was trying to get that from the Danish National Symphony Orchestra. Such a passionate figure on the podium. And um, the last of the first morning, this morning's uh, six conductors. Well. Hopefully we can catch up with him downstairs with Selina Hostrup. Uh, while the orchestra stands up to accept his applause. Yes, Dimitri is with Selina. Dimitri Matvienko. Thank you. You look pretty uh, relaxed. Yeah, but also red like yesterday. Yeah. Not as much as yesterday. <laughs> as much. Okay, okay, yeah. You chose to, to play for a long time, yes. without commenting, yes. a really long time. Why did you do that? I think uh, it was my strategy because uh, yesterday I disturbed orchestra honestly too much. So you, today, you felt you did yeah, that. Yeah, today I I thought that I need to um, um, to let them play. Let them play, yes, and more more freedom, yeah. So. I, I trust them today, so it was very good connection, I think. Okay, so but but that gives you that gave you a little less time to to comment. But did you then have to uh, to regulate yes, a lot yes, while but conducting? It, it's competition. We 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 prefer we choose what 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 to do because we have only 16 minutes. So I decided to give more space and just. Ma uh, made all all what I want in my hand. So, 
Yeah. Okay, we'll see whether it's a good strategy or not. We will know later today. Yes, Thank yeah, you, Dmitry yeah. Madvienko. Thank you very much. Yes, we will know later today which six of these 12 conductors you can see on the screen now will be heading to the, uh, well, what we can call the semi-final tomorrow. Uh, we've heard from six already this morning. We'll hear from another six this afternoon. What a fascinating morning. It's been moving from classical repertoire into this heavier, more complex music from the uh, 19th, uh, 18th, 19th and, uh, and cusp of the 20th century. But for now, it's just about time to break for lunch. So thank you very much indeed for joining us. Uh, we'll be back here same time. Well, not the same time, but the same place. Half past one for another six contestants in this day three of the Malco competition for young conductors uh, round two. So back at half past one Central European time.
Nikolai Malko was a frequent conductor of the Danish National Symphony Orchestra. Every third year since 1965, the Malko competition for young conductors has been held in Copenhagen, Denmark. Velkommen til Malko konkurrencen. Malko konkurrence. Malko Nikolai Malko. Så er Malko konkurrencen 2018. Hosted by the Danish National Symphony Orchestra, one of the world's oldest broadcast orchestras. With our chief conductor, Maestro Fabio Luisi, as chairman of the jury. This year's competition comes live to you from our home at DR Concerthuse. We invite you to enjoy five days of competition, excitement and passion for music. Welcome to the Malco Competition 2021. Your live streaming host and commentator is Andrew Miller. Yes, welcome back to the DR Concert Hall here in Copenhagen. We've uh, had our lunch and now we're ready for the second half of day three and round two of the Malco competition for young conductors. And uh, it's hotting up here in Copenhagen, not just in terms of the weather and the high temperatures outside, but also inside here at the concert hall. We've changed repertoire from classically orientated music by Mozart and Haydn to Nielsen, Mahler and Brahms, very much a different kettle of fish. Candidates have prepared all three pieces. Uh, yesterday they were told which excerpts they were to conduct and they get 16 minutes each with the orchestra today. We've heard from six this morning and we'll hear from another six this afternoon. Beginning with Chloe Rook from the United Kingdom, 24 years old, followed by Teresa Riviero Bohm from Austria, aged 31, and then Joel Sandelson, aged 27, also from the United Kingdom. We'll take a short break of half an hour after those three, and then the final three contestants will play this later this afternoon. Well, Chloe is the youngest participant at this year's Malco competition won the audience prize at the Donatella Flick competition in London just a few months ago, holds a master's degree in conducting from the Royal Academy of Music in London. And uh, as we were saying in the first round, she is an innovator. She founded her street orchestra just uh, a few years ago and um, an ensemble that really came into its own when concert halls were closed during the COVID-19 pandemic. Suddenly, her orchestra had a home on the streets and uh, took music to many people. Also, as we saw in the first round, she conducts from an iPad, which is what she has in her hand there. So here she comes for her second round appearance. It's Chloe Rook Hello. from Hi. the UK. Hello. <laughs> Good afternoon. Marla, first movement, please. Thank you. 
thank you very much. Um, wow, I don't have too much to say. I'd love to look at figure four, please, once again. Um, so I think we can even go a bit further with the character here. It's kind of like a small child who's a little bit like off and then the oboe, lots on the accents there, really, and then really sudden kind of jerky movements. Can we try that at figure four? Can we just go on, please, the 4-4? Four, four? Ah, this is four bars before figure five. Let's just do this passage once more. Even more flowing here. This is four before, yeah, four before figure five, please. Both in the bassoon and in the double, that, that really dry here. I think we're going back to the colour of the opening again, and it's it's like ice. Da, 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 da. And then also in, in the flutes, da, chun, 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 like completely icy. Um, let's just try on the bassoon. This is. Do we have bar numbers? Bar seventy, please. Don't you don't have bar numbers. That's fine. This is the f the fourth bar of figure five. much in in the flutes could this be more forte to start ta -da -da -dum. we're unwinding but it would be good to have something quite warm to come from ta -da -da -dum, tum, tum, tum. and then less afterwards that we, we have this feeling of unwinding and and resting but some from somewhere quite warm carry the energy from the previous two bars let's go two before seven please <laughs>
Thank you very much. Can we move on to the Nielsen, please? I'd like to work on the adagio, or go from the adagio. With the oboe upbeat. This is so beautiful, thank you. Um, just one thought, could we try it again? And I, I love the intensity and esprit sivo of the sound, but I wonder if we could start with something a little more transparent in a sort of, I think the poignancy of this, this passage is the innocence that kind of moves into corruption in a way. Um, it's, it's so tragic. <laughs> and if, if we start with too much intensity, we lose that. So if we could start with something really dolce almost, and then, and then as the chromaticism comes in. Let's try again once more from the adagio.
Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Well, the 16 minutes for Chloe Rook is up and uh, conducting that uh, Nielsen without her baton for extra, extra expressivity, uh, uh, which she certainly got from the orchestra there. And um, the Marla before it, a very good uh, idea of Rubato, the percussionist, able to follow her very clearly in the way she um, she eased the tempo in that opening phrase that's punctuated by those uh, sleigh bells. So, Chloe's uh, second appearance in the competition. And uh, any minute now, she'll be downstairs ready to talk it through with Selina Horstrup. Leave the baton in the Nielsen piece. Why, why did you do that? Yeah, so, I mean, sometimes I do use my hands. Often, I mostly I use my baton, but I was just, I mean, I've been preparing this for a few months now, and I think this adagio is, is one of the most profound pieces of music I've ever come across, actually. And I was preparing last night, and I was working with my baton, and I just, I couldn't get the sensitivity I wanted. And I, I just thought, I really want to be able to connect with the sound of the strings in that opening. And, and so I thought I'd use my hands. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, and did you get what you wanted from Absolutely. the orchestra? Absolutely, the connection was just so marvellous with the strings and they just responded to all the nuances in my hand. It was, it was amazing, a completely, completely unbelievable experience, actually. That was really, really moving for me. Oh, you look as if you take a lot of happiness yeah. <laughs> off the stage. Thank you yeah. very much, Chloe Rook. Thank you. Chloe Rook there. Well, moving on to our second contestant from Austria, uh, and it is Teresa Riviero Bum, uh, sharing a name there with a great Austrian conductor, Karl Bum. Uh, will she choose to conduct Mahler from her home country? We'll soon find out. Uh, Teresa's a former Tanglewood conducting fellow, or I should say current Tanglewood conducting fellow. Uh, and um, in the first round, Apart from seeing her posing with a squirrel in one of her photos, we saw her make a strong and clear impression on uh, more music from um, Austria-Hungary, um, Haydn and Mozart. Uh, she made uh, an immediate difference to the orchestra sound in uh, in the Mozart in particular, and um, and she was very composed on the podium too. She says she's inspired very much by the natural world. Of course, that's something she has in common with Gustav Mahler. And here she is for her second round appearance from Austria, Teresa Riviero Boom. Good afternoon. Um, we start with Brahms' third movement.
thank you. Great. Um, could we start from the, the middle section? Um, so this uh, um, wind courts, um, can we have a little bit more uh, uh, phrasing down every time? It's really every time new. Tayam. Um, and really a bit shorter also the last last note after the the, the slur and um, the celli um, maybe it's kind of try to, to trying to play um, in between of this as a comment as a little bit of a of a yeah poco grazioso and yeah so so commenting that okay um, can we start directly from C let us see Great, thank you, thank you. In the cello, um, it's still a little bit more sound in the in the short notes, so uh, it's still dolce also. Yeah, once more, please. Much. Yes, and maybe we can also try now the also uh, this this endings of of these phrases where we don't have any slur. Um, sorry, uh, any any um, diminuendo, yeah, for the in the in the woodwinds um, bar sixty seven eight. Um, so really going back a little bit, like asking where are we going? So what what will happen? Yeah, and then um, going into this pianissimo. Like really from nothing, really like like it's something. Also, we start a journey. We don't know where where we go. Yeah. Um, letter D with upbeat. This this um, this comment so dumb, but, but, but it's getting a little bit slower now with with every um, time yeah maybe maybe also with with every upbeat like every new breath dum bum 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 yeah okay um, let's do once more the pianissimo right from the pianissimo um, this is six uh, seventy with upbeat and the, the forty I think we can. Yeah, maybe deeper into the string, like really, yeah, as, as deep as possible, yeah?
Thank you. Yeah, it's great. Um, I think, yeah, let's go back to the beginning once more, please. Yes, okay, great, thank you. <laughs> so, Nielsen, uh, from the beginning, first movement. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you, Teresa Riviero Boom, uh, giving us not Gustav Mahler from her homeland, in fact, but Johannes Brahms and Carl Nielsen. The uh, first movement of Nielsen's fifth symphony there, played on the composer's birthday. Interesting, she worked so much on phrasing in the Brahms, getting it flowing and uh, seemed to be enjoying herself, the young Austrian. And in a moment, uh, we can catch up with her downstairs where Selina Hostrup is waiting, hawk-like, for our contestants as they come off the stage. And she's ready. Nice to see you here. Nice to see you too. You uh, dived into the Carl Nielsen with the Danish orchestra. How was that? I, it was amazing. It was, um, yeah, I I mean, it, I've never conducted this symphony before. It's so, I think it's, the, came watch so much also coming together and give and take, I felt so mm. it's amazing, yeah. You, you you chose a more edgy place mm -hmm. in the music. There are also romantic places, we've heard a few of them. Yeah. Um, but you chose a more edgy place, why did you do that? Because I, I, I think this beginning, this this build up of, of yeah, of these long lines, this the, the, the bass, and then this building up with the, the violins, then these this themes, and my my my, prefer, my perfect my perfect um, preference um, place is the the drum and the the Snip. timpani coming in. So I think that's that's I just I felt it. So that's why I chose it. Yeah. Let's see what the jury says. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa Rivero. Boom. Yes, we will indeed. Uh, but um, in the meantime, to our next contestant, the third uh, this afternoon, and it is Joel Sandelson from the United Kingdom. And uh, as we remarked last time, as assistant conductor at the BBC Scottish Symphony Orchestra, he will be in regular contact with Thomas Sundergaard, the Danish conductor. Um, certainly comes with a good pedigree, a double first from Cambridge University in music. Uh, studied conducting at the Royal Academy of Music in London. And um, there were lots of smiles from the orchestra in his first round appearance. Uh, he chose bold speeds in the music he conducted, rather much like uh, his uh, co-competitor from Belarus. And he comes with the obligatory uh, big curly hair, which has stood British conductors in good stead for many years, from Simon Rattle through to Nicholas Collum. Well, there he is making his way uh, towards the stage from his dressing room. And these, these uh, contestants now are one step closer to the big prize, a contract to conduct 24 symphony orchestras around the world, 20,000 euros, mentoring from Fabio Luisi, and uh, really um, the opportunity to make one's name as a conductor almost overnight. So here he is, his uh, second round appearance Conducting Marla and Brahms, Joel Sandelson, 27 years old, from the United Kingdom. Good afternoon. Could we start with Marla first movement from the beginning?
a little bit, there's so little time. Um, so yeah, could we hear that little rustic detail a little bit more in the clarinet um, at uh, 47, da, 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 in the sort of brighter, um, slightly more direct sound as well. Just in this theme, da doom bum bum. Could we treat every tenuto as a little uh, bit of speaking, a little more um, of a push as well on each one? Because it's a bit like sort of nursery rhyme with something a bit sort of sinister behind it. So it really has to have words to it. Um, could we go from uh, directly figure three, please, with upbeat? Almost too sweet, I think. So lots of vibrato. just in that bar, uh, very heavy, but also animato. Sudden, slightly ugly sort of interruption. Um, so could we go back to uh, bar 50, please? And um, in bar 53, let's... Oh, sorry, I'm so sorry. Um, so before figure four, one, two, three, uh, four, five, the last two eighth notes, da di da di da more marcato, into this big writ, and then... Um, four before figure four, big crescendo, bassoon and third horn to the E to F, um, against the E that we have here. So could we go, um, let's take once more, um, uh, there are no lessons again. Um, so uh, before figure four, one, two, three, four, five, six, halfway through the bar. Sorry for the counting. Halfway through, six before. <sighs> Love to just could we try it? so uh, the bar before figure six flutes and bells you continue in tempo 
um, just continue in tempo. So it's like two completely different layers that he wants. And then at six, I would love if we could just try and get this Viennese just rolling forwards from the beginning. And cello is really leading that. If we just take um, before figure six, five bars. So much. Could we go to the second movement of Brahms?
non-vibrato. So sorry to stop just as you play your very first note, trombones. Um, so uh, could we could we just go back in the 27 seconds I have left uh, to letter B, bar 24? I, I think it can be really actually quite transparent, and the the 16ths in the strings you know, less precise actually. It, it's just more like you know a paintbrush. It, it, it can be a little bit more vague if that doesn't sound. Uh, strange. So let's go letter B and really listen. Uh, let's keep th uh, the 16th note lines less and the lines in the winds, da, 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 they're, they're in charge. So a little bit more there. Um, letter B with the upbeat. Little bit in the bass, more a uh, little bit more marcato, more walking bomb, bomb. So we have that uh, rhythm quite strongly there, uh, and the accent in 29 on the second beat, more depth, le less like this, uh, just a bit of sort of regret there. Could we go uh, upbeat to bar 20? Do you have numbers here? Yeah. Upbeat 28, please. <sighs> Can we just skip ahead, uh, just directly to C? Just in this solo, very beautiful. Um, da da, uh, or maybe not. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, I think he had uh, even more time than he was expecting there. Joel Sandelson from the UK uh, conducting the second movement of Brahms' Third Symphony and uh, really getting the sort of glow, the lustrous sound of Brahms from the Danish National Symphony Orchestra. And um, no sooner has he stepped off the stage than he will hopefully be uh, caught by Selina Hostrup, who is downstairs, ready and waiting to catch our contestants and uh, get a word from them about how they think it went. And the orchestra is making its way off the stage because we're about to take a break, but stay with us because we'll have plenty of material to fill the pause. But in the meantime, here's Joel. Hello, Joel. Hello Thank again. you for joining us. You uh, picked the Mahler and the Brahms, and you chose to start with the Mahler piece. Why did you do that? Um, I think it's probably a more... Well, because it's a symphonic first movement with a real story to it, I think that's maybe a more natural place to start. The Brahms is an absolutely beautiful character piece, I think, so maybe that goes more naturally afterwards. Mm. 
so it's about narration also in in this rehearsal uh, which it actually is exactly <laughs> although it's a competition yes although hopefully not too much narration from me and you know um is it is it a very different sound world to step into when you move from the Marla to Brahms, do you think? Yes, definitely. And I think um, also sometimes to get the, the, the transparency that the Brahms needs to, to make it sound quite classical and not, you know, so expressive, outwardly expressive, but a little bit more inward is difficult. Um, and yeah, there's such different worlds to go to and from in 15 minutes. And, and what did you try to convey in the Brahms? The Brahms, it's, it's just exquisitely beautiful and and the sense of nature in it I think and natural simple beauty is is very strong and it's hard to get across in so little time. Now it's the second time that you are in front of the Danish uh, uh, Symphony Orchestra here uh, was it easier this time? Did you did you recognize them? The yes I d definitely and they're so fantastically versatile that they they just are so responsive that um, you know they make it so much easier for, for for a conductor. But I definitely recognize their their sound, but also how much they can do. Thank you, Joel Sandelson. Thank you so much, Joel Sandelson. There, the 27-year-old from the UK, and uh, it's been interesting to reflect on Joel's last appearance at Malco in 2018 when he was just 24. Those three years seem to have made such a difference to his musical outlook, his uh, maturity, and indeed um, his, his interpretative stance on music by Brahms, which I uh, seem to remember he conducted in 2018. Well, we shall be talking more about interpretation now and digging into the very idea of the conductor as an interpreter with Thomas Michaelson. Thomas, great to have you with us. Thomas is a music editor and I guess de facto chief music critic at Politiken, the Danish uh, broadsheet. Also um, a former editor of the Carl Nielsen edition. That's right. So it might be interesting to talk to you a little later about uh, some aspects of um, Carl Nielsen performance. But first of all, um, you have more experience listening to this orchestra than most people, probably <laughs> than most conductors, in fact. <laughs> uh, so it might be interesting to hear um, something about your take on its sound, its style. Is there a particular type of conductor this orchestra enjoys working with, responds well to? Oh, yes, I think uh, definitely. There's, uh, in this orchestra, there have, has, in, in the last 10 years at least, been a, a sense of, 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 of self-esteem, quite correctly, I must say. Uh, and, and of course, they, 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 they want to and they expect to work with conductors who, who don't waste their time and who know what they want and to know how to ob ob obtain that. And I, I thought actually as we watched the, this last contender work with the orchestra that he was doing quite brilliantly because he, he went, early on he went like, we can, we can work as we go. And he was conducting and talking to them while conducting, which is what they like. Yeah, he's not wasting their time. He knows what he wants. He knows how to do it. And if he can show it, he shows it. And if there is something he needs to say to the orchestra en passant while they are going, he does that. And so they, 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 they use the time in, in the most efficient way. I think they like that a lot. Yeah. Of course, the sound of the orchestra is quite strange at the moment. I have to say, I, I'm actually hating getting used to it because they're sitting one and a half meters apart, the players, and it's not, it's not the ideal sound. It's not what this orchestra really sounds like. So I, I wish that, that people who, who, who follow this uh, contest and maybe listening to this orchestra for the first time will stay tuned even as the COVID sort of um, goes away and we can have the players, the string players especially, move together again. Yeah, uh, it was so interesting yesterday and the day before we were listening to Mozart overtures with the orchestra space like this. Oh, yeah. And I think it was a real uh, test yes. of some of these conductors' ability to listen uh, yes. as well as to make their gestural language felt. Now, um, uh, your kind of bread and butter, as it were, is, is sitting uh, in this auditorium and then writing reviews about what you mm -hmm. hear this orchestra play. Mm -hmm. And I just wonder, um, obviously we're dealing with young, inexperienced conductors here, but you will have seen this orchestra work with conductors, um, professionals, who they like and respond to, but also who they don't like and don't respond to. Uh, can you tell from your seat up there when it's not working? Well, it's a, it's a very good question. Of course, it's, a, it's also a tricky question because these are professional musicians, obviously, so they don't, I mean, they don't sort of hoist a flag saying we don't like you. They just go on and do what they're paid to do. Actually, what, 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 is, what can sometimes be a bit 
frustrating is that the conductors whom they like most while rehearsing, and I, I think this goes for many orchestras, all orchestras basically, that, that conductors who they find pleasant during the week while they have the rehearsals, they tend to respond to, in, in, of course, in a sympathetic way. But they are not always the conductors that when I arrive for the concert Thursday evening, they're not always the, the conductors who actually obtain the most interesting results. So there can be a sort of a difference of appreciations. You see what I mean? The orchestra likes, of course, having a pleasant week of rehearsals. And I, as an audience, expect to come and hear something amazing. Yeah. So, and, 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 and the amazing stuff is actually something I often hear while, when, when afterwards the players maybe say to me, oh, he was awful, or she was horrible, or we didn't like this. So, but but, but, but they, it's, it's not always, uh, the objective isn't always to have a pleasant week. Yeah. But obviously, if I was an orchestral player, I would like that as well, so I can understand it thoroughly. I mean, exactly. Sometimes we're talking about uh, a culture clash when it works yes, best, exactly. when there are kind of opposites working together. Exactly. One thinks of... Uh, Creating energy and tension, and, and yeah. at, at the same time, good music. Yeah. Yeah, I know you mentioned earlier uh, Chili Badaki, the Romanian yes. conductor who worked a lot with this orchestra yes. Yes. and kind of complained about sometimes about its work ethic, but oh, at yeah. the same time had such a dynamic energy going on. With he the gave them such a hard time back in the 1970s when he was conducting a lot here, as you say. But, but at the same time, I mean, he gave them such a hard time that, that several players had to go to the doctor and say, please help me, I can't, I can't do this. Please give me a piece of paper saying I can't do this. And, and, and they, 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 they went back with a piece of paper saying I, I have to go home. But on, at the same time, the, the, the orchestra loved working with him because the sonorities he was able to create and the way he was able to use the hall and to, to press them to, 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 to do their absolute best and probably a bit more. Yeah. I mean, this is what we would refer to now as old school Definitely. conducting. Oh, yes. We're in a different age now, aren't we? Yeah, completely. Uh, and, uh, oh, he wouldn't, he, wouldn't, I mean, he wouldn't get a job today. Yeah. And, and th th these are, this is an age in which Danish Finnish conductors are working all around the world. Yes. Some people have described it as a Nordic leadership style, <laughs> more collaborative, ah, yeah, uh, yeah. more kind of a tendency to bring the orchestra along with you um, yes. and uh, you know, empower. Working together. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but but uh, I mean, no less interesting musical results come from that process. Oh no, I think not. And and actually, there's an, uh, there's been something else going on since the 1970s, which is that this orchestra plays immensely much better than they did back then. We have to say, and they can actually do so much even on their own, which good orchestras can. Mm -hmm. So 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 maybe today it makes more sense in general to have conductors who work with the orchestras treat them as their equals. Uh, of course, the conductor has the final say. Of course, the conductor has the, the conception of how this is going to be, but he's working with the orchestra. And I think that respect is contemporary. It makes sense today, simply. Yeah. Yeah. We were talking this morning with uh, Klaus, one of the members of the orchestra, about uh, interpretation when, um, when the orchestra is playing a great interpretation of a piece, but it's not the one from the conductor that's, that's standing right. in front of that's them. Right. It's perhaps from a conductor from years ago or, or, or yes. decades ago. Yes. Uh, and this happens, doesn't it? If, if a conductor can't uh, bring their, kind of their, their, mm. their mm. interpretation mm. to bear, mm. the orchestra will simply play another one. You've famously used, you experienced this with the Vienna Philharmonic. It's, it's a very famous thing. They, they, if they have a conductor they don't really trust or don't really like, they just do as they us, usually do. And if the conductor wants something that's completely out of their comfort zone, the, the, the solo oboe gets up and says, Entschuldigung, so machen wir es nicht hier. We, we don't do it like this here. Mm -hmm. I mean, could this happen in a competition? They're playing De Freischutz Overture yesterday 12 times. Uh -huh. uh, there must be instances in which the orchestra yeah. simply plays a good idea and perhaps that the previous contestant had for the next contestant. Uh, I expect that happens all the time, really. Mm -hmm. And and one of the, the, the previous contender, not the last one, but the previous one, I think, mentioned the fact of give and take when she was interviewed afterwards. Maybe. No, he, she, sorry. Uh, 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 and I, I, I think it, it's only fair. Why should the conductor bring everything at the orchestra? Not Thing. So to, to, to any conductor, it's a gift if, if the orchestra gives him or her something nice and, and she or, her, or he can use it, obviously. Yeah. Nothing well, wrong with that. Uh, on that point and on the point of uh, Max Weber, we're going to hear now from one of the first round conductors, uh, Xunping Quan, and he is going to talk about how he puts his interpretative stamp on uh, Weber's over to, overture to Der Freischutz. Classical music, this thing, only needs to, you know, it needs to be played and then people can enjoy it. 
we are the medium to make those things happen so that the audience can see. Does it make sense? We're trying to preserve the, the culture, the great culture of music, art music. We should use our knowledge, our experience, our imagination to give the music a meaning. <laughs> It's almost from the bottom, underground, heaven, uh, no, hell, from hell, yes, heaven's there, sorry. This is a end of a section. It has very soft ending. This can mean, for example, hesitation or a tiring of struggle or something like that, you imagine yourself. And then suddenly, major. Do mi so do, major. It's, I see it as the justice or the God or whatever you love that, that, that come in, you know. Because in this opera, in the end, or right before the end, something happened. Some godlike figure comes in and forgive him and also showed the love, showed the understanding, and he also, um, you know, ac acknowledge his faults or something. So this is the moment that the, the righteous, the justice came in. Oh, but suddenly, you know, you see before, it's all pianissimo and very almost sad. Nowhere to go. And then suddenly, oh, the theme comes back, but in a much more relaxed, released feeling, you know, the, this kind of when you don't have any guilt in you and you released, you know, like a Christian after go, going to the church, you feel, ha, ah, life is good and I'm not that bad, you know. <laughs> you know, that's the feeling. Like you played the first time in this competition. Xunping Quang there, one of uh, the first round contestants describing his uh, take, his interpretative take on uh, the overture to um, Der Freischutz by Max Weber. Um, Thomas Mickelson is still here. Uh, Thomas, uh, so interesting to hear a young conductor talk about yeah. their um, uh, how to condense the three-hour drama into a three-minute overture there. Yeah. Yeah. And um, one of the prizes, or the biggest prize on offer at this year's Malco competition is a contract to conduct 24 symphony orchestras around the world. Now, that's an awful lot of a sort of big burden for a young conductor to take, isn't it? And they might find themselves conducting repertoire which received wisdom dictates it takes a lifetime to, to grow into and to yeah. have uh, the experience to conduct. Yeah, that is, of course, a dilemma. How can you be an old, an old person in a young person's body with a young person's experiences? And, and I, I mean, in a sense, you have to say that there will be things in this music that they will think about differently in 40 years. But at the same time, there is this beautiful thing about music that it does, it, it, it does without words, which means that if you can feel it, you can actually communicate it. And I think that these feelings are so basic, they will touch us when we're young, they will touch us when we're old and when we're anywhere in between. So if you're, able, if you're really in contact with your own feelings and have like an emotional experience, you can have that as a quite young person, I believe. Uh, also, young persons may have very limited emotional experience, so that's what it's about, I guess. And also, you could say there are composers who have composed masterpieces when they were very young, Schubert, Mozart. And, 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 and we know from what every musician says that even when they are 65 years old, they still find it difficult. So, so it also works the other way around, in a way. And do you believe that the conductors can learn from other conductors, including ones who are no longer with us, I I listening to recordings. I mean, sometimes you hear recording from Carlos Kleiber, someone yes. like this, and you just feel yes. 
Gosh, who have there to is hear so his much in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I, I will be very surprised if these young people have not all heard Kleiber's Freischütz. Yeah. Of course they have. But I mean, it's also important not and to try and recreate the. No, no, yeah, of course they shouldn't. They shouldn't copy it. Yeah. And the, if they're wise, they don't try to. But they will have learned so much from just listening to it. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You must have seen from your position as a critic that conductors are getting younger. Oh yes. Especially Finnish ones. Oh yes. Uh, and maybe Nordic ones in general. Yes. And um, yeah, it brings with it certain attitudes. Uh, you've noticed speeds increasing. Perhaps that's connected to other things. It could be connected to other things, I think, actually. When we talk about the speed of interpretation, which is, in general, becoming faster than it was maybe half a century ago, uh, I think it has to do with the speed in general in our lives. We can't be bothered to read the news for much more than 30 seconds. Our attention span is getting so short. And... and um, that will reflect on, on the speed with which we do everything else, even listen to or indeed conduct Brahms or Mahler. Yeah, tempo is relative. It, it, obviously, obviously, and as Glenn Gould, the pianist, once said, the tempo is not relevant. It's what you do within the tempo that matters. Mm -hmm. And I find that I go along with it because I listen to so many contemporary interpretations. I tend to go along with it, whereas some of my older friends who still relish their recordings by Karian when he was relatively young or whoever, uh, Klemperer, when he was old, they will think or say to me, oh, this is going so fast. Does it have to be so fast? And I don't really experience it in that way because I'm so used to I'm going along with it. Every week I sit here and listen to, to this. Yeah. So it's fine with me. <laughs> fine with you. Well, um, uh, thank you, Thomas. We'll come back to you in just a second. But right now uh, we're going to go downstairs to Selina Horstrup, who is with not just a jury member, but also a former Malco competition winner. Yeah, I'm standing here backstage with Mei Ann Chen. And uh, as you say, she's not only a jury member because she's also music director of Chicago Sinfonietta and she's also chief conductor of the Studiate and then former Melco winner in 2005. Welcome, May Ann Chen. Thank you for joining us here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and you know the work as a conductor from the podium. Now you're sitting out in the hall watching all these young people doing their best. Yes. Can you actually see their ideas, what ideas they try to convey. You can see their craftsmanship, of course, but can you also see the ideas that they bring into the stage? Well, I try my best to try to see what they are trying to say through music. And some are more experienced than others, uh, but I also try to see the potential. Do they have what it takes in years ahead of them to develop this craft and be a great conductor someday? Now, when a conductor walks in and um, and starts rehearsing with the, with an orchestra, he or she can be, you know, go along with the musicians or come with a strong personal vision, a strong personal interpretation. What's actually important when you walk in there as a conductor? Should you place yourself in one position or the other? I think I'm right in the middle, meaning you come with a very strong conviction of what you think the composer is trying to convey through this particular piece of music, but then you also listen like mad what the orchestra gives you, because the orchestra as a whole is an artist. They also want to be expressive, and so if you listen carefully, then it becomes a chamber music partnership, which I think is so important. Um, lesson I took from coming here to Scandinavian countries, it's the, the teamwork of working together and making people feel that they're really part of this creative process, I think it's so important. And that's a Scandinavian thing? Well, for me, it is because I think I think um, this feeling of uh, let's do this together and um, feeling that like we created this vision together, I think makes the orchestra happier and um, will will help the conductor have a sustaining career. So, uh, let's say you come up on stage as a conductor, you have a strong personal vision, mm -hmm. interpretation. You want to bring it forward to the musicians they don't agree with you. What do you do? Well, that's another craft of a conductor that, that's important. I, I wouldn't call it negotiation, but I, I call it, uh, how do you convince the orchestra of your ideas? And sometimes I may use interesting examples from life, from eating, from 
our nature from being in different countries. I use all kinds of examples to help convince mm. the musicians uh, my ideas of, of this particular passage. So it's cooperation and con convicting the musicians. Now, how important is it for a conductor to have his or her own personal vision when coming on stage? It is so crucial because you don't want to come to an orchestra and the orchestra said, well, we, we didn't really have any idea what's unique about this conductor. There's so many conductors, as you can see, 612, uh, more than 600 uh, applicants for this year's Malco, yeah? And it's so interesting for me to see um, that the same repertoire and different conductors come on stage and it sounds like a different piece of music. And so I give kudos to the DR Wonderful Orchestra. They respond to each conductor just as if they're fresh. Thank you. I'll uh, bring it on to the musicians. Mei and Chen, for, thank you for joining us here. We are, we are looking forward to hearing then what you will decide then later this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Mei An Chen, a unique perspective as both a jury member and a former Malco competition winner. And, um, Thomas Mikkelsen from Politigen is still with us. And Thomas, she made an interesting point there about um, being able to bring the orchestra along with you. And yeah. we've had conductors today conducting Nielsen's Fifth Symphony, most of them obviously for the first time, mm. their first encounter with this piece. Mm. The very opposite to the orchestra here, which one might say has this music in their blood. Definitely. Now, as the editor of um, many of Nielsen's symphonies, you know the notes yeah. Side out. Yeah. The very exposed opening to that symphony yes. Yes. is a high wire walk, isn't it? In many ways. It, in many ways, because for as you say, it's an exposed opening, and it could it could go so many ways. So you have to have a very clear conception of what is going to come after when you conduct it. But also, it's an interesting thing maybe to know that that Carl Nielsen didn't know what was coming after. He he wrote this little um, uh, this little these two notes this this um, third moving up and down in the violas. And, and he, he admitted that he had no idea what was going to follow. And what follows is, of course, a, a huge symphony in two parts, which actually each comprise uh, one of, uh, two of the classical movements in a symphony. So, so it's like a four movement symphony put into two parts. Yeah. And he was, I think he, he was very successful with this symphony, maybe his best, actually, yeah. in many ways. Certainly his most uh, internationally uh, renowned. And, um, yes. Yeah, well, maybe we'll come back to that. But for now, um, we're turning back to um, Max Weber. And uh, a few of our conductors from the first round are going to tell us a little bit about how they have prepared the, uh, that piece, the overture to Der Freischutz. <laughs> That's impressive. Thank you so much. You followed almost every my idea. Thank you. <laughs> Horns, thanks a lot. That was beautiful. Let's try from Molto Vivace. So I will try to inspire you <laughs> because technically it's like everything really fine. Not, I have not much to say because this is, you know, all, you know the story. So when you are in the dangerous place, your mind imagines danger before, behind every tree, every bush, everything, even though you have a gun, right? So you are very stressed, and later our accent is to me is like, when you're stressed, some little movements, shakes, even leaves, frightens you. Like, you are really frightened. So every accent and forte should be subito, very sharp. And then this 50, this forte, fortissimo, quarter notes, like really shotgun. Bam, 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 bam. Pam, pam, and okay, let's try this. Molto vivace. The leading part here is the cello. We need the bass, da -di -da -di -da, and be very, very exact. Um, this is the part in the opera um, where Max has his aria of despair, so he's really frightened about what's happening. It's, it's really intense, but it shouldn't get too loud. It should be, you know, very, very... Um, and then when it gets loud, it's, that was beautiful. So, Molto Vivace, please. Can you go, can you go a little bit more active? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> 
molto vivace. Yeah. One second. This is where he sings Doch mich umgarnen in finstere Mächte. It can uh, be staccato the last two notes. Uh, again, same place, please. Okay. Thank you. Goodbye. Uh, a little insight there into uh, Max Weber's overture, overture to Der Freischutz. Um, not as I, uh, as I explained first, conductors talking about their interpretation, actually conductors just doing it. Uh, three or four very different approaches to Der Freischutz, which we heard yesterday. Thomas, I know you weren't here yesterday, but still some interesting things uh, to observe there. So um, much to observe from just these short yeah. clips, I think. And, and some of the conductors really trying to get the orchestra inside the narrative of the opera. Yes. Some um, we have seen today using ex sort of extended metaphors. Yes. Talking a lot about, um, you know, who's feeling what in, in personal terms. Others relying on their gestural language to do the work. Um, there's divided schools of thought about which approach uh, works best. Yeah, and most musicians prefer that conductors don't talk too much, which I understand because, I mean, the first one we just saw here, he's a very nice guy, no doubt about it. Very happy, even overwhelmed, which is not a good point, starting point, as to be overwhelmed. He should be the one in charge. And after that, he starts going into the woods and he even talks about whether the musicians have guns or not, which is impossible for them to translate into anything musical. So he's going too far, he's talking too much, and I think musicians like it much better, justifiably they do, when conductors maybe talk a little while they conduct. But these long narrations, uh, where these stories about how everything should be when the musicians eventually get to play, that's not the best thing. Yeah, I mean, I should say, uh, in his defense, um, we, we saw yes. a very small clip of him there. Yes, and he's <laughs> apparently brilliant, yeah, so, yeah. I, yes. <laughs> so I'm very happy to hear that. Yeah, but I mean, it's, it's, it's also a matter of having a kind of clarity, maturity of gestural language, isn't oh, yes. it? Yes. Which, which, with Joel Sandelson, the, the British conductor, three years ago, he didn't have it. This year, he yeah. absolutely and does he have it. it. Absolutely. It's so interesting to see. Well, Thomas Miggelson, it's been so good to have you with us uh, today. Thank you for your insights, and um, I hope um, you enjoy the rest of the conversation. Will, will you be tuning in for the rest? Of oh, definitely, the... I will, yeah. yes. Uh -huh. And of course, we get to see the winner at some point back here with the Saturday. Danish National Symphony Orchestra. Yeah. Thank you once more, and uh, stay tuned, because coming up are the final um, three contestants in this day three of the Malco competition, the second round. And later today, we'll know which of today's 12 contestants are heading through to the final on Saturday. Stay with us. Nikolai Melko was a frequent conductor of the Danish National Symphony Orchestra. Every third year since 1965, the Malko competition for young conductors has been held in Copenhagen, Denmark. Velkommen til Malko konkurrencen. Malko konkurrencen. Malko Nikolai Malko. Så er Malko konkurrencen 2018. Hosted by the Danish National Symphony Orchestra, one of the world's oldest broadcast orchestras, with our chief conductor, Maestro Fabio Luisi, as chairman of the jury. This year's competition comes live to you from our home at DR Concerthuset. We invite you to enjoy five days of competition, excitement and passion for music. Welcome to the Malco Competition 2021. Your live streaming host and commentator is Andrew Miller. Yes, uh, welcome back to the DR Concert Hall after that short break. Uh, we are ready for part four, the uh, final three contestants in this second round of the Malco 
competition for Young Conductors 2021. We start in Sweden with Anton Holmer, aged 30 years old. We'll then hear from Chloé du Fresne from France, 29. And finally from Lin Han Tri, uh, 27, from China. Well, after a well-earned break, the Danish National Symphony Orchestra is back, tuning up under its uh, concertmaster, Christina Oerstrand. Um, we can see on the screen now what we're dealing with. Uh, once again, three symphonies, Nielsen from Denmark, Gustav Mahler from Austria, Johannes Brahms from Germany. Uh, three pieces which will test the conductors in many different ways. And uh, let's tell you a little bit more about Anton Holmer. He was... Uh, well, he's a Scandinavian, so in a sense, he's on home territory, but he is from the other side of uh, Sweden, from the one which uh, neighbors Denmark. Um, he made a lovely improvised joke in the first round, uh, which uh, played on his nationality and went down very, very well with the Danish National Symphony Orchestra. Less vibrato, he said, which is a Swedish way of saying no vibrato. He knows what he wants. He's got another very good left hand. And he's also uh, another um, participant returning from the Malco 2018. Now there he is, uh, some last minute preparation. And uh, Anton has worked as an assistant conductor with the Orchestre Nationale de Lyon and uh, their Danish music director, Nikolai Sepp Schneider, starting, uh, well, actually, he hasn't started yet. He starts in the autumn of 2021. But he has received inf uh, invitations from the Swedish Radio Symphony, Swedish tra Chamber Orchestra, and uh, has plenty of experience with Swedish orchestras, including his own, the Swedish Symphony, which he founded in 2020. And he will know just what's at stake here. A huge prize uh, on offer for the winner of this competition. So here he is, 30 years old, Anton Holmer from Sweden. Hey. Back. So please, let's start with Mahler. First moving from the beginning. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. It's enough like that. Very nice. So overall, I think it could be even better if it was a little bit less heavy. Huh? I think, it, especially in this tempo, it's easy that it gets sort of heavy, especially lower strings. So think about that, especially in those you ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum, that they sort of stay curious all the time. OK, one more time from the beginning. First flute, it could be something more on the appoggiaturas. It's a bit more emphasis, bian, bian, bian. something a bit more evil, I could say. OK, one. Hey. Hey, sorry to interrupt. C is it possible more sort of resonant? Uh, not louder, but more noise, I would say, yeah. Uh, it shouldn't sound beautiful, but it was beautifully played anyway. Oh! Okay, yes. Thank you. You're cheating a little bit, I think. You, actually, the, the shift should be in the crescendo, isn't it? So, and then when you change finger, subto pianissimo, okay? Let's do this. In fact, let's do only clarinets and first violin, bar three. Oh, Yeah. And that was a, a bit more flirty, you know? It's this don't touch me feeling, okay? Tutti, one more time from the beginning. One, oh, sh Almost. <laughs> yes, okay, thank you. In a normal case, we would maybe, but since the competition, uh, let's continue. Please, the pits, second violin, viola. You could help the first violins much more. So something more enthusiasm, okay? Not an opera performance, but don't think accompaniment, but something a bit more. Okay, uh, I'll torture you with bar three one more time. <laughs> Directly to the bar three. That's it. Okay, yes. Please, strings, do it as it's written, 11. It should be more of a surprise, like almost like you, you forget to play, you know. So, a bit more surprise and then quicker diminuendo. The same thing on the forte piano. You are quite slow going to the piano. It's, it's a bit too much time, so you lose the surprise, sort of. So, wow, wow. Okay? Let's do 10, please, with the horn. Oh, I'm very sorry. <laughs> I can count backwards, but if it's okay, uh, Yes. So long, ten is fine. Okay. Uh, oh. Oh. That's it. <coughs> Same thing. <coughs> non crescendo. And now. <coughs> Careful, Chelly. Melodic staccato. Okay. 
escuchando. Yes, uh, first violin and second violin. A little bit too on the string almost at after figure two, you get, yes, one, two, third bar. Da, 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 da. So those short notes. Da, 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 da. We need it for the, for the spirit. Okay, one more time. Two, directly. Not bar two, but the big two. Well, oh! <laughs> To leave space for the celli. Yes, yes, I was afraid. I, I was going to continue. Okay, let's do Nielsen from bar 319, please, and play through. You have bar numbers, I hope, otherwise, we'll get problems. A temple, yes.
There's really nothing more to say. There's a couple of seconds left, so I say thank you. And sorry uh, that I, I couldn't find you with my eyes. That's why it was, yeah, uh, beautiful. Thank you, clarinet. Yeah. I would just destroy if I rehearsed this with you. So uh, thank you very much. I <laughs> yes. Well, there we go, bowing out Anton Holmer from Sweden on uh, what an extraordinary passage of music that is from Carl Nielsen. Uh, the end of the first part of his Symphony No. 5 in which he instructs the snare drummer to do whatever he can possibly think of to disrupt the rhythm of the orchestra. Absolutely extraordinary when it first appeared in uh, the 1920s and um, it still has such power today. Uh, the first time we've really heard that piece, that little part of the symphony played uh, in full today. And, um, well, uh, in a moment, uh, we can hear from Anton, who is downstairs, to talk to Selina. Hello, Anton. Hello. Good to see you again. Thank here. you. You got the Mahler and Nilsson. Yes. And, uh, it, they, they apparently make you tell a lot of jokes. You were laughing a lot in there. You're always laughing that much. Yeah, I don't know if it's my fault or, or if it's... I mean, I think you... Of course, it's serious music, but, but you need... Uh, yeah, you need a good ambience. And, and of course, I, if they enjoy it and I enjoy it, it's, it's of course the best thing. And we are, we are in Denmark after all, so... What do you mean uh, we're in Denmark? No, I think they, they, everyone has got a sense of humor, and this orchestra is, is so open-minded, and they like to have fun at work, and, and they love to work also, and they love to, you know, go deep into the music. So I have nothing against laughing with them. Okay. Did you feel a strong connection to the Nielsen piece just shortly in there? Uh, yes, of course I do. Uh, although I've never done the piece, but it was a privilege. I mean, I couldn't resist doing the, the epic part, so uh, it was very nice. Thank you, Anton yeah. Holmo. Thank you. And um, we're glad he did do the epic part, um, Anton Holmer there. Well, we move now to France. Chloé Dufresne, uh, who um, once again was a really very impressive first round uh, contestant. Excellent on the contrast in that Haydn symphony she conducted. She overcame her nerves. She became... Uh, so uh, clear and encouraging to the orchestra and um, really worked them hard on articulation. She's uh, been a finalist of the Siemens Halle Conductors Competition 2020 in Manchester and uh, has appeared before in the Donatella Flick Competition in London. Uh, currently a student of Sakari Oromo, uh, former Malco jury chair uh, at the Sibelius Academy in Helsinki. Here she comes from her dressing room, 29 years old, has conducted the Opera Nationale de Toulon, the Opera de Rouen, the Opera de Vichy, uh, so plenty of experience in the, in the theatre, and with the Opera Nationale de Montpellier, another institution, of course, with their Danish chief conductor, Michael Schoenwandt. So, here she comes now, our penultimate contestant of the day, Chloé Dufresne, 29 years old, from France. Hello. Hello, nice to see you again. Uh, let's take Brahms' third movement, please. spend too much time let's let's uh, shape this uh, a bit more let's take it slightly faster like really 
a bit tirar, and then we really take the tempo. Uh, one more time, I really would like to have tira tira. So the, the vibrato on the third um, eight note, like really intense before, but without too much, okay? That's a bit too much. It's just touching, touching it. It's not a big uh, crescendo. One more time. Let's do one more time from, from bar 13, please. Um, clarinet, it's slightly late, uh, so a bit ahead, please. Um, yeah, and then one before A, second violin. You can really play this, this uh, F sharp, like go with the harmony there. Um, let's take bar 13, 14, 13, 13 with a bit. Good. Uh, slightly uh, more bassoon, bassoon just on the first note, and that will be perfect. Um, let's let's just fix. Uh, let's take 33. I really would like to have a, a small um, comma there. Um, was great. It sounded very good. 32. Let's take actually 32. 32. in tune just after, <laughs> be careful. Uh, very good. Uh, can we have a slightly more clarinet uh, when it goes down uh, and maybe um, a bit less flute and oboe to really have the very long fry phrase uh, from B. And then uh, clarinet and bassoon, it's bar 45. I, I really want this to, to be a bit more uh, there. You did it, but not enough. Let's take the a bit to B, please.
thank you. I think we have to change to Nielsen. <laughs> thank you very much. Let's take uh, three bars before six. It's a bit in the middle, but... <laughs> three before six. Great. Can we have like a bit more uh, first oboe, L the, the G uh, up? We, we don't hear it so well. Uh, very good. Let's make a, a faster diminuendo uh, bar 161. 161, uh, the string. Like, let's really go to uh, zero. <laughs> uh, great, it sounded good. Uh, let's take directly 161. 161? Like, yeah, a bit more oboe. Can we have the, the fortissimo, uh, pianissimo, timpani a bit more uh, sharp? Like, uh, yeah, more sharp, please. Uh, and same for the um, tamburino, like really, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, not too long and, and, and a bit less. It's a bit too loud right now. This, um, yeah, except violin, let's not play too loud, 196 for the balance, and I really want to have the oboe and, and clarinet and, and horn on your chord. Uh, we need to hear that, so all the rest a bit less. Uh, let's take one more time from eight.
Thank you. If I, if I have a bit more time, that's great. Uh, let, oh. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm afraid you don't have any more time. Um, but still, um, Chloé Dufresne from France made an impact there on the most complicated parts of, uh, one of the most complicated parts of Nielsen's Symphony Number no. 5. And uh, last, some of those percussionists, other than the snare drummer, had something to do. Well, uh, Selina Hostrup is downstairs and I'm sure will be poised, ready to catch Chloe straight from the podium and get her reaction to that second round performance. And here they are. Okay, yeah. Hello. <laughs> Chloe Dufresne, you chose one of the most difficult places in the Nielsen, one of the most complex. <laughs> Why on earth did you do that? Well, I thought it's, it goes uh, a bit like completely opposite with the Brahms that I've chosen. So, yeah, I don't know why I did that. I wanted to try my hand on it. Um, I don't know, maybe it's not a good strategic plan, but uh, yeah, it shows different things and um, I tried my best. <laughs> mm. And as you said, it was a big contrast to the Brahms. Mm. Was, it, was it difficult to, uh, to travel from this one romantic sound world to the next? Uh, yes, I mean, it is because it's 15 minutes, so we are like also really planning for the time and so it's it's difficult for the concentration and take the right tempo and all of that. So, of course, but but then that's the rule and that's the game. Mm. <laughs> Were you happy with the Nilsson in the end? Yeah, I mean, a uh, lot of things still to, to do. Uh, I mean, they know very well the piece. And uh, yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> I'm happy. Thank you, Chloe Dufresne. Thank you. Well, I think it was a gamble that paid off tackling that uh, difficult part of the symphony. Chloe Dufresne there. Now, uh, on to the final contestant of the day. Lin Han Shui from China, aged 27. Once again, a strong performance in the first round, which is obviously the reason she's here in round two. Uh, impressive physical performance for her on the podium. And um, let's remind ourselves what she's come from. She was a conducting fellow at the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra in 2009. Uh, of course, one of the first American orchestras to appoint a female music director in Marin Alsop. Uh, she studied at the Peabody Conservatory, uh, esteemed uh, conservatory in America, and actually with Marin Alsop. And um, she has considerable experience conducting orchestras both in the USA and in China. Well, uh, just a reminder that you can keep uh, your eyes peeled on Malco Competition's social media, Facebook and website if you want to know which are six musicians from today will be heading through to round three, which begins uh, uh, tomorrow and indeed ends tomorrow. It's a one day round like round two. We are edging closer and closer to finding out who will walk away from Copenhagen with a ready-made conducting career. Will it be Lin Han Shui? Well, we'll find out. Here's her second round performance, the 27-year-old from China. Hello, everybody. Very nice to see you again. So let's start Nielsen, please, and measure 268 Adagio. Beautiful oboe solo, yeah. With pickup, yeah. very beautiful so let's think about the ocean like the big waves so can I have more inner sound 
So we have the moving motion and also expressive. Okay, thank you, Adagio. One more time, please. And a little bit faster, maybe. Thank you. So before 12, can I ask Claire Knight, second violin and viola, the 416 note, really big crescendo, and the horn, you are the, the open gate is opening. So more macato, but round sound here. Okay, let's try three before 12. Thank you.
That's very beautiful. Thank you so much. I just have one thing to ask. So 16, letter, uh, number 16. So can I have the B? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want with the big mass and still have the, I mean, the energy and the melody. But let's change to Brahms, thank you. The third movement, please. Yes, yeah, third movement. So from the beginning, very beautiful cello. So can I ask violins and viola? So you play very well, but can I ask more hairpin in two bars? 
and very delicate, but have em emotion in emotion, so we can support the child more. Okay, oh, let's try there from the very beginning. Thank you very much. And thank you to Lin Han Shui, who wraps up uh, today's uh, performing uh, activities, at least, at the Malco competition. And, um, yeah, how <laughs> great to see her on the podium. It seems she really comes to life there, conducting a sort of physical extension of her own body and her own uh, personality. Um, and going for the Nielsen first and for that wonderful moment with their snare drum. Well, uh, she's downstairs now, ready to talk to Selina. Lin Hansui, thank you for joining us. Yes, thank you, thank you very much. You got the Brahms and the Nielsen, two very, very different pieces, and you chose to let the musicians play for a long time. Yeah. Why, why did you do that? Yeah, because I think I would like to show more when i conducting, and I will let musicians trust me a little bit time and I can hear what I should just I mean for the next conducting time so yeah it's very beautiful sound I just listening and show what I exactly I want and and did they do what you want yeah yeah they they do reaction very fast and effective I love that so could, could you feel that this is an orchestra who knows the Nielsen very well yeah, of course, they, they know very well, but I, I know what I want and they really, I mean, trust me, so yeah. Thank you, Lin Thank Hansui. Selina Hustrup there talking to Lin Hansui. Well, we've heard from 12 conductors today and uh, at some point later today, we will hear from the jury which of them will proceed to round three, which begins tomorrow. There they are. A uh, huge range of conducting styles, a huge range of approaches, of, of methods of communication. Um, but they all, I think, showed why they deserve to be in this second round. And each of them brought something distinctive to the Danish National Symphony Orchestra in that music by Brahms, Nielsen uh, and Mahler. Well, tomorrow uh, the repertoire changes once more. The big challenge is this new piece by Britta Bustrom from Sweden. And this is a new commission for Malco 2021 that the conductors have only been able to see for a few weeks. Uh, Claude Debussy's uh, Prelude de l'après-midi d'un fun, a masterpiece of uh, musical impressionism, of course, uh, all about detail and colour. Uh, Stravinsky's The Firebird Suite, um, a piece, uh, 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 well, a firework, uh, as well as a firebird uh, that will need uh, real atmosphere and power uh, from the conductors. And then another piece which combines both the qualities of the Debussy and the Stravinsky, you might say, uh, Till Judenspiegel's Lustig Streich from Richard Strauss. Uh, a, a comedy scene um, in the form of a symphony. Then they will have to conduct uh, the first movement of Sibelius's Violin Concerto uh, with um, no uh, rehearsal beforehand with the orchestra. The, uh, the soloist Johannes Sirhansen, uh, the one of the concert masters here at the um, Danish 
National Symphony Orchestra, and that's a playthrough. And the prizes, let's remind ourselves what's at stake. 20,000 euros for the winner, 15,000 euros for the runner-up, and 12,000 for the third placed contestant with an additional 1,500 for the audience prize, which can go to any one of the three placed contestants. And a final look at the jury, chaired there by Fabio Luisi, uh, the chief conductor of the Danish National Symphony Orchestra, and a confection of experts, power figures, musicians, and uh, uh, all of whom will be um, deciding who it is who walks away from Copenhagen with the prize uh, on Saturday night. Well, that just about wraps things up from here at the Danish uh, Broadcasting Corporation's Concert Hall, the DR Concert Hall here in Copenhagen. Another fantastic day. Do stay tuned to the Malco Competition's Facebook uh, page and website if you'd like to know later on this evening which conductors will be progressing to the third round tomorrow. But in the meantime, it's goodbye from us and I hope you'll join us for round two tomorrow. <laughs>